Welcome to Fantasy Audiobook. I, Blackbeard, start by asking for dark fruit. Chapter 66. A-V-E-R-T-I-S-E-M-E-N-T. -E -E Night. The capital of Seven Rivers, abandoned shipyard. A dilapidated pirate ship fell from the sky and landed among countless abandoned ships. There are already several people waiting there below. A minute later, a group of more than a dozen people jumped off the dilapidated pirate ship. After seeing the person coming, the man who was the leader of the people waiting below took a step forward and said with a complicated expression. Mr. Teach, you really made a big fuss. Ha 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 ha, I didn't scare you, Mr. Bingshan. Blackbeard smiled and walked up. Bingshan didn't speak yet, but Frankie said excitedly. How could it scare us? I watched the whole live broadcast, Mr. Teach, you are so handsome. I really like it so much. Scumbags like celestial dragons should be executed. That's what makes it enjoyable. I still feel super happy. As Frankie spoke, he put his arms together and made an exaggerated pose to express his feelings. Compared to Frankie who was excited, Barry, the boatman on one side, looked extremely complicated. He is actually a relatively conservative person at heart. Although he also hates the celestial dragons, he is still a little worried about the actions of the Blackbeard pirates. Worried that they will bring disaster to the iceberg. But when he saw the expressionless expressions of Lucci and others, he swallowed what was on his lips. On the contrary, after seeing him, Kaku immediately came up and hugged his shoulders and smiled. Barry, your injury is not serious, right? I was so sorry at that time. Kaku, you. Barry looked at Kaku with some surprise, and then looked at Blackbeard. Seeing his expression, Kaku spread his hands and said helplessly. We have already boarded Master Teach's pirate ship, and there is no way we can get off. You should have seen me during the live broadcast that day, right? When Celestial Dragons was executed, 163, and we see P9 stood in the middle. Now we can't go back to be spies even if we want to. It's such a pity. Quote. Are you regretful? Are you eager to do this? Jabra on the other side directly exposed it. I wish I could do this. Fukuro clapped happily. Obviously these CP9s are not very accepting of the fact that they no longer have to be spies for the world government. After a few days of getting along with everyone in the black group, coupled with the enjoyment of food and wine every day, and the guidance of top teachers like Blackbeard, they would never want to go back to the life of a spy. Adventure at sea is much more exciting than being a spy. As for being a pirate and being evil. Forget it, compared to the celestial dragons, the pirates look kind-hearted. Of course, it is impossible for Blackbeard to completely believe everyone in CP9 at present. He did not shed the seeds of mind lock technique deep in their consciousness. If one day someone defects or has dissatisfaction with him, he will be able to feel it. It's not too late to deal with it then. After glancing at the others, Bingshan smiled and changed the subject. Mr. Teach, why don't you first take a look at the ship that Frankie and I have strengthened together? Oh, have you also enhanced the Ark Proverbs? Before Blackbeard could speak, Enel became excited when he heard this, and immediately turned into a blue lightning and appeared between the iceberg and Frankie. Bingshan and Frankie naturally watched the live broadcast that day, so they had a new understanding of Enel's terrifying strength. To be able to fight Marine Admiral to that extent, Enel's strength is also unfathomable. However, because Enel is also a master shipbuilder, the three of them had a lot in common, so they immediately started chatting without any grudges. The people in the black group soon arrived at a huge harbor deep in the abandoned shipyard. Here, the Ark's motto stops here. It's just that at this time, Ark Proverb's divine face made of gold was covered with black cloth. Iceberg opens Shikai explains, Mr. Teach, your ship is too ostentatious, so we have no choice but to build it up first. We haven't made too many changes to the appearance of Ark Proverbs. Just add a guardrail above the side of the ship. Then sixth gate gun barrels were added to both sides of the bow, three on each side. As for other functions, let Frankie introduce it to you. After all, weapons and waterproof diving are his main contributions. I am responsible for spending money and helped you buy a huge atom tree trunk from the black market for 500 million belly to use for diving and waterproofing of ships. Hearing this, Blackbeard's eyes suddenly lit up. Can Ark Proverbs still dive? After looking at the iceberg, he immediately turned his attention to Frankie. Enel and other black group members were also curious. 
After all, this is the place where they will live daily in the future, so naturally they are still very curious. Seeing this, Frankie also said excitedly. Let's talk about weapons first, because there is an electromagnetic gun made by Mr. Enel in Ark Proverbs, so I didn't make too many. As a weapon, I just made the sixth gate cannon. But this sixth gate cannon is not just a weapon, it can also be a propeller for the Ark's Proverbs. The gun barrel is at the bow of the ship. Using the power of the cannon, there is also a propulsion port at the stern of the ship, which can greatly accelerate the ship. The same is true whether it is in the sky, on the sea, or under the sea. Quote. I just made an observation. It seems that the 6th Gate Heavy Artillery does not use gunpowder weapons. Enel also discovered the clue. Snapped. Frankie snapped his fingers and said proudly. That's right, the fuel used in heavy artillery is cola. No one would think of this, so others can't restrict our fuel. Enel was immediately surprised when he heard this. He didn't expect that the delicious cola drink here in Qinghai could be used as fuel for ships. It really taught him a lesson. Seeing Enel's shock, Frankie was very satisfied and continued to introduce. Then there is the waterproof function of Ark Proverbs. We use the Adams tree bought from the black market to not only greatly strengthen the hardness, density and defense of the Ark's Proverbs, but the Adams tree is no less waterproof than steel. Coupled with Mr. Enel's electric drive system, there is no obstacle to directly using Ark Proverbs for diving. Finally, I also added H Soldier Dockyard System to Ark Proverbs. This Soldier Dockyard System is divided into three parts. One is Sky Island Arms Dockyard. The second is Daily Procurement of Docks. The third one is Submarine Diving Dock. I will focus on the third Soldier Dock System, the other two are as their names suggest. The third submarine diving dock is a small submarine I made separately, which can meet the diving requirement of 5,000 meters and can carry five people. It is also prepared for special circumstances. Quote. Everyone in the black group nodded with great satisfaction after listening to Frankie's transformation of the Ark's motto. In order not to cause too much trouble to Bingshan and the others, Blackbeard planned to leave directly tonight. As early as when the ship was handed over to Iceberg for renovation, he handed over 1 billion baileys to him and asked him to find the treasure tree Adam, and the remaining money was used directly to fill the living things on the ship. Now that everything is ready, it's time to leave. However, before leaving, Blackbeard suddenly turned to look at Frankie who was discussing quietly with Enel and grinned. Frankie, why are you standing here discussing this all the time? Why don't you just get on my ship and you and Enel can change it however you want from now on? What's more, such a good ship can't survive without an excellent ship repairman like you. How, come aboard my ship and be my partner Frankie. Frankie, who had been having a heated discussion with Enel, couldn't help but trembled when he heard this. Bingshan also showed a surprised look. He didn't expect that Blackbeard would invite Frankie. But then I thought about it and it was normal. Thinking of this, Bingshan looked at Frankie with a firm look in his eyes. Hey, hey, stop joking, Captain Teach. There was a trace of struggle in Frankie's eyes, and he forced a smile and said. A person like me wants to board your ship. What's more, I have a group of younger brothers to support, and they don't have me too. Stop being so nagging Frankie, if you're a man, just be happy. Blackbeard waved his hand to interrupt. Are you going to let your little brothers fool around with you for the rest of their lives? Why don't you hand them over to Mr. Bingshan? Will he still have no work for your younger brothers? Not to mention, don't you want to be like your master Mr. Tom and sail to the end of the world on your favorite ship? The sea is far more exciting than the seven waters. Furthermore, it's not like you'll never come back once you go out. Follow me to the top of the world, and then my Blackbeard flag will be the standard that protects all. Frankie was silent when he heard this, but the blood in his chest was stirring and burning. Who among men doesn't yearn for the sea? What's more, he has been influenced by his master, Mr. Tom, since he was a child. The kind of magnificent and wonderful adventure stories filled his childhood. What Blackbeard said now made his silent heart completely agitated again. Snapped. At this moment, Frankie felt his shoulder being pushed and his body staggered. Turning around, he saw Bingshan looking at him with a smile and saying. As Mr. Teach said, your little brother doesn't have a better future with me than with you. And it's not like he won't come back, it will only take a few years at most. 
Go, go to the sea you long for. Bingshin, you guy. Frankie covered his tearful eyes with one big hand, and waved with one hand. Everyone in the black group looked at this scene with smiles. After a while, Frankie said goodbye to his two sisters and younger brothers, then boarded the ark and never came out again. Although Blackbeard and the others did not leave so quickly, Frankie had no intention of coming out. However, Blackbeard's observation hockey sensed that Frankie was in his room, lying on the window crying while looking at the people below them. Brew brew brew. At this moment, the phone in Blackbeard's pocket suddenly rang. He was a little surprised after seeing the phone bug. Is it a call from Baroque Studio? He didn't hesitate and picked up the phone immediately. Soon, a somewhat familiar voice came from the other side of the phone. Mr. Teach. Yes, you are. Ah, I'm sorry, I'm Belle. I was entrusted by Princess Vivi to come to the capital of Seven Waters to deliver something. Now I can see the capital of Seven Waters. Are you still there? Of course, you will be able to see me when you arrive at the abandoned dock in the back street of the Seven Waters capital. Okay, I'll be there soon. Chaka. After hanging up the phone, Blackbeard smiled. My team will soon. Can enhance one's strength. Of course, the premise is that this unknown, zone phantom beast species is not suitable for him. After obtaining the munch munch fruit, he has been very cautious and did not choose to devour other devil fruits, just to wait for better fruits to appear. The phantom beast species is undoubtedly his first choice. But it is a pity that except for the fish fruit phantom beast replica that badgers ate, he has never encountered any fruit of the phantom beast. Of course, except for the strong sky form. In fact, the fantasy beast species among pirates are very rare to begin with, and by the end of the animation, there were only a few of them, and they were all in the hands of famous people. It is really difficult to get additional fantasy beast species. The unknown phantom beast species that Baroque Studio spent 1.5 billion to buy at a high price in the underground world is what he is looking forward to most. He absorbed all of Blackbeard's memories and knew that he was one of the experimental subjects of the celestial dragons in the Valley of Gods. He had seen the most complete Devil Fruit illustrated book of the Celestial Dragons version. And Blackbeard also memorized it. Otherwise, Blackbeard wouldn't have been hiding on Whitebeard's ship for so long. He himself said in the previous life plot that if he had not met Dark Fruit, he would have stayed on the Whitebeard ship for the rest of his life. It was Dark Fruit who chose him. It's a bit like Nika choosing Luffy. As for whether there is such a thing as fatalism, it's hard for Teach to say. After all, he has already traveled through time and has the devil fruit, so what else is impossible? Thinking of this, Blackbeard flew directly into the sky and summoned Bell. Afterwards, Bell handed Blackbeard a small treasure box in his hand. After arranging for Bell to have a banquet with everyone in the black group, Blackbeard returned to his captain's cabin with the treasure chest in his belly. Click. The small treasure box was opened, and an ice blue fruit with a strange spiral pattern lay inside. The fruit's rhizome was T-shaped and the snow white sides looked like wings. After seeing this devil fruit, Blackbeard's pupils suddenly shrank. There is indeed a record of this fruit in the Celestial Dragon's version of the Devil Fruit Illustrated book. Zone Cat Fruit Phantom Beast Species Winged White Tiger Form Celestial Dragon's version of Devil Fruit Illustrated book introduces. After eating this fruit, the appearance will not change much, and there will be two pairs of white wings tattooed on the back. After using the fruit's ability, the hair color will first turn white, and then the tattoo will turn into blue-white frost wings. The wings can also release a strong wind-like sword energy, which can penetrate deeply. Highly developed. Moreover, after using the ability, blue and white ice tiger claws will appear on the hands and feet of the ability user, as well as a blue and white striped tiger tail. If developed properly, he can also become an ability user. One of the most effective weapons. At the same time, it will release frost and cold air as it moves, which can freeze enemies upon contact. It can also spit out freezing light from its mouth, and can also release it through its hands, which can freeze the sea in an instant. All in all, this is a phantom beast species that can not only greatly enhance the physical strength of the esper, but is also a devil fruit with the power of freezing, flying ability, and wind slashing. Its fruit status is also at the top of the phantom beast species. Compared to Kaido's zone hyphenation point fish fruit phantom beast green dragon form, it is only stronger but not weaker. It's you. Ha 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 ha. 
After reviewing the introduction of the devil fruit in his mind, Blackbeard growled excitedly, and the corners of his mouth slowly raised, the smile continued to expand, and the heavy laughter filled the captain's room completely. Blackbeard never expected that Baroque Studio would bring him such a huge surprise. My original plan was indeed correct, and the information from Baroque Studio is also one of the important puzzle pieces for the future. After thinking about this, Blackbeard's mood completely calmed down. Looking at the devil fruit in his hand, he smiled. Then he thought, the ability of the original fruit called, God-eating power, was used by him. The next second, Blackbeard's whole body was wrapped in purple light, and immediately his mouth opened wide, and there was even more purple light with rich connotations. Then he directly threw the devil fruit in his hand into his mouth. Without him chewing it at all, without even tasting it, the devil fruit was sucked into his body by the purple light in his mouth. Then, Blackbeard slowly closed his eyes. Immediately afterwards, he felt that Munch Munch Fruit's God-eating power had changed from zero halves to one half. Seeing this, Blackbeard knew it was done. From now on, he will become an unprecedented owner of the Three Fruit ability. After the banquet in the evening, everyone in the Black group said goodbye to Bingshan and the others. Frankie didn't collapse in the end. He hugged a group of boys and cried until they died. Then he was caught by Blackbeard and thrown into the boat. The iceberg below stood in the abandoned dock, looking up at the black mass gradually disappearing into the sky, everyone sighed. Mr. Teach, where will you go? Barry heard this and laughed. Mr. Bingshan, you should ask, where is that guy in the world? Then the two couldn't help but look at each other and laugh. Wah wah wah, above the sky, the propeller of Ark Proverbs is spinning rapidly. The people in the black group were sitting or standing chatting in the entertainment room on the top floor of the Ark. This entertainment room is located in the center of the top floor of the Ark. There is a huge glass above the head to see the starry sky at night. Since Ark Proverbs is above the sky, there is no need to worry about driving problems at all. As for thunderstorms and storms, there is no need to worry. There are magic soldiers standing guard at the detection station on the ship at all times. They and other cadres only need to take action at critical moments. After Ark's proverbs flew for a while, Nami, who was lying on her side on the red sofa, revealed her increasingly graceful curves. She held up her little head and looked at Blackbeard and said. Teach, can you tell us our next destination now? Whoosh. After hearing Nami's words, everyone turned to look at Blackbeard, who was sitting on a high-backed chair with his legs crossed. Today, Blackbeard changed into a white outfit, a white cloak, a white suit, and white leather boots, which made him look inexplicably cold and arrogant. This made the black group members feel a little strange. But now that Nami is asking about the route, it's hard for others to interrupt at this time. Devil's Triangle Sea Area, Blackbeard smiled. Now we just have to wait until the big event breaks out, so we, the Blackbeard pirates, had better settle down. In addition, Badger's and Carmen's fruit abilities have not yet been fully developed, so it is time to take a break. But I don't think this period of peace will last long. Quote. A. After hearing Blackbeard's words, Nami and others immediately exclaimed. The Devil's Triangle Sea Area. Is it the legendary place where ghosts exist? Hey, hey, isn't it? Are there really such scary things as ghosts? Who knows? Ghost isn't it the kind that is pale and bleeding from its seven holes, and crawls out of the TV? Ha ha, I'm really looking forward to it. Hey, Robin Chan. Ah, ghost. No, seeing their laughter, Blackbeard shook his head and laughed. Dong dong dong, Blackbeard raised his hand and knocked on the handrail. Stop making trouble, we haven't finished talking yet. Eh, hey, is there anything else? Nami tilted her head in confusion. Of course, there is an owner of the Devil's Triangle Sea now. Blackbeard grinned and said, Gecko Moria, one of the Shichibukai, is over there. I won't make any mistakes this time. A. This time it was Badger's turn to be excited. Enel also showed an eagerness to try. Having been in Qinghai for so long, he has basically understood the distribution of strong people in Qinghai. However, after thinking about his fight with Kazaru, he seemed a little less interested in Shichibukai. After thinking about it, let's leave it to Badgers and the others. Badgers, Crow, Oka and Bartolomeo started rock-paper-scissors again to decide their opponents. This leaves Khalifa waiting for CP9 in a dark position. These guys had done this to them before, 
but Enel got the better of them and killed them with one move. But they were really in awe of Enel, especially the scene where he fought against Marine Admiral Kazaru yesterday. Of course, what really shocked them was the sword strike that seriously injured Kazaru, their captain. It was then that they realized that their captain's real strength was definitely not much worse than Marine Admiral. Ability, physical skills, hockey, and even swordsmanship are all top-notch. Isn't this a pure hexagonal warrior? At this moment, Enel on the side suddenly said. Captain, why do I feel that the aura on your body is different? There is always an inexplicable chill when I look at you. Hey, I feel the same way. Badgers immediately came over to express his opinion. The others also nodded and looked at their captain curiously. Hey, this is a secret. I'll tell you after you finish going to Moria. Blackbeard let it slip with a smile. Everyone pouted. Nami has already begun to board the inspection platform to watch the heading. Soon, after the course was determined, Arc Proverbs headed towards the Devil's Triangle. Arc Proverbs now has Enel's lightning storage. Basically, you only need to determine the general direction and don't worry about it, because it can drive automatically. This is also the high-end shipbuilding technology mastered by Enel. Don't ask, it's the black technology of the moon people. Based on Blackbeard's speculation about pirates in his previous life, there is definitely an extraterrestrial civilization in the pirate world. It's just that when he traveled through time, the plot hadn't reached that point yet. Thinking of this, Blackbeard returned to the room and prepared to continue practicing hockey. Then he further developed the Zone Cat Fruit Phantom Beast Species Frostwing White Tiger Form Devil Fruit that he had eaten. But just after developing it for a while, Robin knocked on the door and entered his room, and then he developed Robin. This development took place in one night. I can only say that the happiness of flower flower fruit is unimaginable. At noon the next day, Arc Proverbs entered the Devil's Triangle Sea, which was still filled with heavy fog. After entering it, Blackbeard and Enel began to use their knowledge to capture the world's largest thriller bark that exists in the Devil's Triangle waters. With Blackbeard and Enel's ability to scan hundreds of sea miles, it wouldn't take much time to find the thriller bark, which was as big as an island. This thriller bark is the second secret base Blackbeard has set for himself. After all, this thriller bark is not only well hidden, but more importantly, it is extremely huge. With this thriller bark, Arc Proverbs also has a port to dock at. In the future, after Blackbeard has his own territory, there will be no problem in considering flying Thriller Bark directly there. If he hadn't eaten this Phantom Beast Frost Winged White Tiger form Devil Fruit Blackbeard still wouldn't have the confidence to fly a Thriller Bark as big as an island, but after eating this Devil Fruit, his physical body and physical strength would have improved. A Qualitative Leap There is no problem in flying with an island and even fighting at the same time. He can do what Kaido can do. With these thoughts in mind, Blackbeard's eyes suddenly flashed red, and the corner of his mouth curled up and he said. Found it. Four o'clock direction in the southeast, moving forward. Receive. Frankie, who was steering the ship, responded immediately. Wah wah wah. As the Ark's motto turned and disappeared into the fog, the huge propeller wind pressure quickly blew away the fog in front of it. Immediately afterwards, a giant three-masted sailboat like an island appeared in front of everyone. Even the Ark's Proverbs, which is several hundred meters long, is as small as a small sampan in front of this thriller bark. Oh my god, is this, really a ship? It's completely an island. It's so shocking. Sure enough, I was right to go to see how could I have seen such a huge ship in the world. This may be the goal that the iceberg idiot wants to achieve in the city of seven waters in the future. Hiss, Qinghai is indeed very interesting. It's indeed shocking. But the captain said that there are Shichibukai living on it. As long as we kill them, this ship will be ours. Ha 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 ha. Bartolomeo, you're right. Why ha 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 ha. Brothers, rush with me, defeat Moria, Shichibukai, and seize the thriller bark. Go 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 go. The people's morale was high and their blood was boiling with the Ark Proverbs. At this time, everyone was lying on the railing of the ship's side, looking in amazement at the huge thriller bark on the sea in front of them. Now they are still in the perspective of the sky, and the closer the Ark Proverbs gets to Thriller Bark, the more shocked everyone becomes. It wasn't until the Ark's Proverbs arrived over the castle square in the center of Thriller Bark that Badgers could no longer bear it and jumped off the boat. When he fell, 
Badger's whole body had turned into a dragon-like form covered with blood-colored scales. Boom! Immediately afterwards, the bricks and stones on the castle ground in the square shattered, and a huge pit immediately appeared. Moonlight Moria, get out of here lousy, our captain has taken a liking to your thriller bark. Way ha 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 ha. Moria, who was eating hot pot and singing in the castle, suddenly found herself being knocked on the door. This made Gecko Moria confused. What's the situation? The entrance to my thriller bark should not be open. Where did this arrogant guy come from? Call out. Just when Moria was confused, Perona, who was wearing a gothic Lolita outfit and holding a small umbrella, came through the wall and said with panic on her face. No, 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 Lord Moria, there is a flying ship in the sky outside the castle. A very scary guy came down from above. That guy is like a monster, covered in blood and growing horns. Hey, is there such an interesting guy? Absalom held his chin and thought. Is it possible that some special creature accidentally came to us? Ha 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 ha. Moria patted his fat belly and laughed loudly. Horns on your head, that sounds interesting. Ha, huh, if you have horns on your head, it sounds like a demon clan. Hogback's sharp voice sounded from the side, his face full of curiosity. Moria's smile immediately froze on his face when he heard, Ghost Clan, because this race made him immediately attacked by dead memories. Everyone from the Ghost Clan deserves to die. Moria was instantly angry. He stood up from the ground at a height of 6.92 meters and walked towards the outside of the castle. Lousy wants to see which blind guy dares to mess with me. Anyone with horns on their head deserves to die. Perona. Moria Sama also has horns. Moria. That's okay. Perona, you are still so ignorant. Absalom followed and lectured. I want you to take care of me. Perona was immediately angry and raised her hand, and a negative ghost penetrated Abu. Shalom's body. Plop. Absalom knelt down and said in pain. I'm sorry, I'm worse than a fly. Seeing this scene, Perona immediately covered her mouth with pride and laughed. Drink, drink, drink. Hey, Perona, you're going too far. Absalom immediately jumped up to accuse after recovering. Phew. Plop. Absalom kneels again. I'm sorry, I'm really wasting air while living and wasting fields with death. Hogbark. It's up to you. The three of them were still laughing and laughing on the spot, and then they heard a loud shout from outside. Is your name Gecko Moria? So what if it's lousy? Tempest kick broken star. Boom. Whoosh. Boom. Immediately afterwards, Perona, Absalom and Hogbark saw with astonishment on their faces that the magic duck who had just walked out with great momentum flew back directly and smashed the table where they were eating hot pot. Who the hell are you? CPO. Why would the CPO take action against Lousy? Moria stood up a little embarrassed, staring at the blood-red figure with dragon horns outside the gate with a confused face. At first he thought it was Kaido who was coming, but the opponent turned out to use Marine Six Styles. This time everyone in Moria was stunned. In his impression, apart from the veteran Vice Admiral, only the World Government CPO group of Marine Six Styles can achieve this level of strength. But just as he thought, why did the members of the CPO want to fight with him? CPO, don't compare that scumbag with me. Remember it. Lousy is the captain of the Blackbeard Pirates' first division, and Badger's the dragon. Badger's, who had transformed into a human dragon state, now had dragon horns, blood-colored scales and a swinging dragon tail giving people an extremely evil feeling. He walked towards the hall in confusion. Moria grinned. Whoosh. The next moment, a figure appeared behind Moria in a flash. Boom. Then, Badger's kicked Moria away without hesitation and said at the same time. The ship asked me not to destroy the castle. If that's the case, let's go out and fight. Boom. Moria flew backwards, smashed several boulders on the ground, and plowed a ravine before stopping. At this time, he raised his head and saw the huge strange ship suspended in the sky, as well as the eye-catching picture of a pirate made of white skulls on a gold background and black beard above the ship. Flag. The Blackbeard Pirates Nose Group. Moria looked shocked. He has naturally seen the live broadcast that shocked the world two days ago, and the news is also flying all over the sky these days. How could he not know about the Blackbeard Pirates? There are two top-level ability users in a pirate group, and both of them are capable of fighting Marine Admiral. This pirate group is no worse than the four emperors. 
But why would a pirate group of this level target him? Moria doesn't understand. Although he didn't understand, he knew that he still had to fight first. Thinking of this, Moria raised his hand and slammed it to the ground and shouted. No matter whose pirate group you are, if you dare to mess with me, don't blame me for killing you. Kakuta Cage. Badgers, who was charging towards Moria again, suddenly had a flash of red in his eyes, and immediately felt a terrible attack coming from the ground in front of him. The next moment, a huge horn knife formed by a black shadow rose from the ground, looking like it was going to stab Badgers through. But Badgers had no intention of avoiding it. He roared excitedly, and his fist wrapped in the black air flow hit the huge black horn knife with one punch. Iron body arms hacken, tisk, boom, the next moment, the huge horn blade shadow was shattered by the punch of armament hockey entangled by Badgers. What? Impossible. Badgers stepped on the air with both feet and exploded, his body suddenly accelerated and came in front of Moria. He wrapped around armament hockey with ten strokes of the Shenlong tail swinger, and slapped the side of the shocked Moria's face e. Tempest kick breaking waves. Bang ming. Boom boom boom. The next second, Moria flew hundreds of meters upside down and was kicked directly into the forest, breaking dozens of big trees before stopping. Absalom, Perona, Hogbark and a group of zombie soldiers behind were all dumbfounded. They never thought that the powerful Lord Moria would be hung up and beaten like this. Seeing Moria being blown away, Badgers had no intention of stopping. Bang bang bang. The next second, Badgers soared into the sky on the moonwalk, and swept towards Moria's landing point with several kicks. Tempest kick storm. Swish swish swish. While breathing, Tian Shudao's huge blue slashes struck towards Moria's landing point like a gust of wind. Lord Moria, careful, get out of the way. Perona, Absalom and Hogubik in the rear couldn't help but exclaimed when they saw this scene. They didn't expect this guy to be so ruthless and not give his opponent any chance to breathe. Moria, on the other hand, was beaten so hard that she just sat up and saw a dozen huge blue slashes coming down on her. Feeling the terrifying power of those slashes, Moria's hair stood on end. He knew it was too late to dodge, so he immediately slapped the ground with both hands and shouted. Shadow Warrior, whoosh, the next moment, a figure that looked exactly like Moria stood upright from the ground. Instead of retreating, he advanced forward. He jumped into the air and rushed forward to meet the slashing attack. Boom boom boom. For a moment, a huge explosion sounded in the sky. Moria below was relieved, but his expression soon changed. Because the substitute shadow warrior he had just used had been completely destroyed by the opponent's attack. Moria is not a vegetarian either, she is a Shichibukai after all. Immediately shouted again, Shadow Mage. Another black shadow that was exactly the same as Moria stood upright and attacked the charging badgers. Whoosh, but badgers didn't even look at the shadow, and stamped his feet in the air. Bang. A sound of air explosion suddenly occurred, and Badger's figure instantly disappeared in front of the Shadow Mage. Nani, Moria also didn't expect that the opponent's speed was so terrifying. You're too slow. Iron body arms steel fist. Before he could react, Badger's had already appeared in front of him, and the dragon claw wrapped around armament hockey hit Moria hard in the abdomen. Bang. Aha. Moria was hit by this punch and her body instantly hunched over, and she vomited out a mouthful of stomach acid filled with blood. Then his bulky figure rose up from the ground again and flew hundreds of meters upside down. It was shattered for several months before it hit a big tree and stopped. After striking out, Badgers followed up again and came to Moria who was lying on the ground. He kicked his huge body into the air, and then followed up with another combo. Bang bang bang. Boom boom boom. Wow, Moria spat out several mouthfuls of blood and pain, and then lay on the ground completely motionless. He knew that at the opponent's speed, his ultimate move, Shadow Gathering Ground, would not be able to be used at all. Moreover, even if it is used, it is useless. As your body gets bigger but your speed slows down, you will only become a target. Moria felt that he might be doomed today, so he immediately waved his hand and said. No, I won't fight, I... I cough cough. I admit defeat. Chi chi chi. Hearing Moria's words, Badgers, who had just rushed halfway, applied the brakes and plowed a long ravine on the ground until he stopped a few meters in front of Moria. Shichibukai. That's it. 
You don't seem to have been beaten very much. Badgers had returned to normal from the human dragon state. He scratched his head. Why do I feel that you are much weaker than Crocodile? Is it really Devil Fruit's problem? Nani, did you also attack the Sand Crocodile? Moria coughed up a mouthful of blood and said in shock. Badgers, ah, this seems to be kept secret for the time being. Moria sighed, and then he looked in the direction of the castle. You can take my head, but I hope you can let go of my men. They are all weak fools, and their heads are worthless. How, you're not losing money on this deal, right? Use my Shichibukai Gecko Moria's head in exchange for the lives of my weak subordinates. What do you think, Blackbeard? While speaking, Moria turned her head and looked at Blackbeard, who was flying slowly from the other side. Badgies opened his mouth and said in his heart that we are not here to kill you. Since the other party has misunderstood, let the captain solve it. Ta ta ta. At this moment, a figure suddenly rushed over from a distance, opened his hands, blocked Moria, who was covered in blood and dying, and shouted. No, if possible, trade my Absalom's life for that of Lord Moria. Anyway, I am also a person with superhuman ability, transparent fruit ability. This head is still worth some money. Maybe, after you kill me, the devil fruit that all men in the world dream of will be reborn in the thriller bark. By that time, Master Teach, don't you already have this fruit that makes countless men salivate? Hey, Absalom, you. Moria was moved when he heard this, but he still gritted his teeth and yelled. The people in the black group watching the battle on the Ark Proverbs above could not help but sigh. Being able to see this scene on a pirate is really admirable. Compared to their emotions and admiration, Blackbeard looked weird. Why does this scene look so familiar? Especially. Thinking of this, Blackbeard suddenly looked behind a big tree in the forest and grinned. Shichibukai Bartholomew Kuma, do you want to come out on your own, or should I ask you to come out? A, and a Shichibukai. Hearing Blackbeard's words, not only everyone in the black group was stunned, but even the seriously injured Moria turned his head and looked in one direction with difficulty. He himself was very confused. Why did the tyrant bear appear here? Real or fake? Understand this understand this. But soon, Moria saw the familiar figure walking out of the woods with slow steps, which made him startled and said. Bear, why are you here? The bear ignored Moria, but stared at Blackbeard for a while, and then spoke in his soft voice. Pirate Supernova, no, it should be the fifth emperor of the sea now. Blackbeard with a bounty of 3.5 billion baileys, Marshal D. Teach, I didn't expect to meet you here. Nani, the fifth sea emperor. What's the situation? Everyone in the black group was full of questions. Even Blackbeard himself didn't expect it, and he couldn't help but show a look of dumbfounding on his face. It's over, I'm the king. Is Luffy a substitute? But when I think about it, I feel relieved. After all, he made such a big noise before, first killing the celestial dragons, and then seriously injuring Marine Admiral Kazaru. And left easily while being pursued by the world government and Marine. With this kind of strength, it is not an exaggeration to call him the fifth emperor on the sea. Ignoring the shocked people, Blackbeard looked at the big bear curiously and said, Bear, as a Shichibukai, why are you here? Shang paused when he heard this, but he didn't hide anything. By order of the world government, Shichibukai Gecko Moria went to naval headquarters for a meeting. Oh, Blackbeard showed a meaningful smile and said, Then Moria may not be able to leave today, Shang, do you want to take action? Of course not, I just came to inform you. The bear shook his head bluntly. Moria's face turned dark, although he knew that even with the addition of Tyrant Bear, they would still be beaten by the black group, but he still did not expect that this big bear would go so far. We are all colleagues, so we really don't give them any face, right? The bear looked at Blackbeard and said curiously. So are you going to kill Moria? Or are you going to do what a man does and agree to Absalom's request? Hearing this, Blackbeard laughed and said, I don't choose either one, but I want to ask you a favor. Oh, how can I help you? Shang also became interested. He wanted to know, as a fellow pirate, how would the newly promoted pirate emperor choose when faced with such a loyal companionship? Your meatball fruit ability can bounce off everything, right? Blackbeard pointed at Moria and said, Can you help me pop out all the injuries in Moria's body? Buzz. Hearing this, Big Bear's eyes lit up with golden light, then he nodded and said. 
can. Hey, Blackbeard, you can kill me if you want. Why do you have to humiliate me? Moria didn't understand what they wanted to do, but he was beaten so badly that he could only rage. You'll know soon. Thief ha 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 ha. Blackbeard smiled like a villain. Everyone in the black group was also curious about what their captain would do. Bang. Laugh. Soon, the bear grabbed Moria and popped out a huge red air-shaped bear paw directly from his body. After seeing this scene, Blackbeard's smile became even bigger, he turned to look at Absalom and said. Don't you want to save your captain? Did you see that thing? That's all the damage Moria has suffered before, and the old wounds in his body. If you want to save him, go inside and feel the pain Moria once felt. Of course, this kind of pain is likely to cause you to die in excruciating pain. So, Absalom, what are your choices? Hearing these words, Moria, who was tightly held by the bear, shrank her pupils and started to struggle. But although his injuries were ejected, his body has not recovered so quickly. He could only roar helplessly. Bear, let me go, Absalom, don't do anything stupid to Lousy. Captain, needless to say, I am the one who deserves to die. It was you who saved me from the brink of death. Give me a chance to repay your kindness today. Absalom's ugly lion face showed a relieved smile. Then, under the watchful eyes of the black group and the secretly observing zombies, he jumped up and jumped into the huge red bear's paw. He he he, blood splattered everywhere, ah. The next second, Absalom's shrill screams echoed on the terrifying spinnaker. A few hours later, Absalom woke up from the hospital bed. He opened his eyes and found that the ceiling was a familiar castle building. The first impression in his mind was that this was Hogback's medical room. Not dead yourself, what's happening here? His ears moved, and he seemed to hear loud noises coming from the distance. This made him very confused. Difficult. After struggling to hold himself up, he found that his injuries seemed not as severe as he thought. After a while, Absalom limped open the door of the medical room and looked towards the central square of the castle. Yo ho 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 ho. Bring Binx's wine to you. Like the sea breeze, ride the wind and waves as you please. On the other side of the sea, the sun is noisy. The songs of birds draw circles in the sky. Goodbye harbor, home of silk. Skull and skull flag, flying in the wind. Under the boundless sky, the strong wind blows. The waves are dancing and the drums are beating. If you are frightened, you will be doomed. It's not that there's no such thing as tomorrow's rising sun. Is that the singing voice of that skeleton? That guy is back again. What's happening here? Absalom looked confused, but he was very familiar with this singing voice. Is it the song of a skeleton in the Devil's Triangle whose shadow was taken away by Master Moria? He is back to steal his shadow again. What a persistent guy. Thinking of this, Absalom limped towards the bustling square. Then, he was surprised to find that Lord Moria was not only fine, but was happily toasting with that blackbeard. Even the Shichibukai tyrant bear who arrived later did not leave, but sat and drank in silence. Perona was among several other beautiful women. He took one look and immediately looked away. No matter how stupid he is, he still knows who to look at and who not to look at. What about Hogbark? Soon he found Hogback, who was happily communicating with another old man leaning on a big blue horse. What's the situation? Am I in a dream? Absalom looked confused. At this time, a little bat flew over. It was a zombie he knew, named Sergei. Lord Absalom, are you awake? Great, you are fine. Sergei circled around Absalom excitedly, and then he said solemnly. Lord Absalom, I misunderstood you before, thinking you were just a lion in heat. I didn't expect you to be such a loyal person. I saw the whole moment when you died for Lord Moria, it was so hard. I, Sergei, would like to call you the toughest man in Thriller Bark. Absalom, thank you so much. After a brief understanding, Absalom finally understood the whole process. It turns out that Master Teach didn't come here to get the captain's head, but to let him join the Blackbeard Pirates. The captain finally agreed. The reason is that the Blackbeard Pirates will one day go to war with Kaido of the Beasts. With these words, Moria joined without hesitation. In this regard, Absalom understood that, Master Moria has never forgotten his friends who were killed by Kaido. This made him very moved. This time there was finally no group destruction. It's such a blessing. Just when Absalom was sighing, he heard excited voices coming from the distance again. 
Ha 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 ha, Kong Changeling of our Blackbeard Pirates is finally out. Let me come, let me read. The first is our fifth emperor of the sea, Lord Blackbeard Marshal D. Teach, with a bounty of 3.5 billion belly. Next is Thor Enel, with a bounty of 1.5 billion baileys. Next is Blood Dragon Badgers, with a bounty of 1.1 billion baileys. Ha, huh, oh, I read that right, CP9 Rob Lucci, bounty, 300 million baileys. What, he's actually taller than me. Bartolomeo, bounty, 200 million belly. CP9 Kaku, bounty, 150 million belly. CP9 Jabra, Taiwan bounty, 100 million baileys. Son of the Devil, Nico Robin, bounty, 100 million baileys. CP9 Snuggle, bounty, 80 million baileys. CP9 Bluno, bounty, 65 million baileys. CP9 Fukuro, bounty, 45 million baileys. PFF ha ha ha. Crow, your bounty is so pitiful, only, 35 million baileys. The same goes for Oka, with a bounty of 35 million baileys. Poison Q is even less, only, 20 million baileys. Nami, like Carmen, has a bounty on her head, 10 million baileys. Zhuang Zhuang is the most pitiful, still 500 baileys. Quote. Everyone laughed immediately after hearing this, especially badgers chasing Crow and Oka and taunting them, which left them speechless. And right now, Big Bear stood up, nodded towards Blackbeard and said. Thanks for the treat, I haven't had such delicious food in a long time. In return, I will give you some information. In half a month, Marine and World Government will publicly execute the leader of Whitebeard's second division, Fire Fist Ace. Wow, after hearing Tyrant Bear's words, the entire banquet square first fell into a strange silence, and a few seconds later a huge sound of surprise erupted. Hi, that's the captain of the second division of the Whitebeard Pirates. The world is going to be in chaos. Hey, hey, is this kind of thing true or false? Isn't it a little outrageous? Didn't the captain also obtain information before? Fire Fist Ace has been secretly captured by the world government. It seems that it is not impossible to execute him. Indeed, and that Fire Fist Ace is also the son of Pirate King Roger. There is no need to doubt it. We were once part of the CP organization, weren't we? It is a fact that Fire Fist Ace was arrested. He must have been arrested for so long without announcing it for some reason. In addition, what Tyrant Shang said before about the Shichibukai recruitment order, ate it's almost inseparable. At first, everyone was still doubtful, but with the testimony of Lu Qi, Kaku and Khalifa from CP9, the matter suddenly became more believable. Only then did Shang remember that there was actually CP9 in the Blackbeard pirate group. He turned to look at Blackbeard and said, Captain Teach, you are such an unpredictable person. I hope that next time we meet, we won't become enemies. So, goodbye. That's hard to say, Mr. Big Bear. Blackbeard glanced at the bear meaningfully, thinking that we might see each other again in half a month. Whoosh. After Shang finished speaking, his figure disappeared. The originally lively banquet also became quiet. Everyone in the black group, as well as Moria and his group who had just joined the group, all turned their attention to Blackbeard. They knew what their captain would say. I have a plan. Blackbeard looked up at them and grinned. But before that, please allow me to keep it a secret, and I will give you a surprise after a while. As for the next half month, everyone should practice hard on this terrifying three-masted, 433, sailboat. Yes, that's right, I'm talking about you, Magic Duck. While speaking, Blackbeard turned his head to Moria, who was covered in bandages. Eh, hey, do I want to practice too? Moria, who was enjoying the meal, looked confused. Don't be ridiculous, Moria, look what you've become now. Back then, you were the man who beat four emperors Kaido. Blackbeard stared at him and said, Don't you want to avenge your subordinates with your own hands? Look at you, you look like a fat pig now. Do you still have a little bit of hockey from before? Among the Shichibukai, you are the weakest. As soon as these words came out, Moria fell into silence. Everyone in the black group couldn't help laughing. After a while, he looked up at Blackbeard and laughed. Ha 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 ha, Captain, your words are really hurtful. Then, please, very good, this is the gecko Moria I once knew. Ha 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 ha. 
In the next few days, everyone in the Black Group once again entered into their own cultivation. Halfway through, Blackbeard called Vivi and asked Mr. Three from Baroque Studio to take a trip to the Devil's Triangle. After that, Blackbeard began to develop his own fantasy beast fruit. For now, the abilities of Zone Cat Fruit Phantom Beast Species Frostwing White Tiger form are divided into three parts. The first part is the ability of the wings, 1. Use the wings to fan out the strong wind like a slash, 2. Use the wings to blow out strong winds and tornadoes with the power of freezing. The second part is the ability of the tail. It can attack like both hands and feet, and it also has the power of freezing. The third part is the fruit's ability, 1. Freezing light spouts light from the mouth that can freeze the sea instantly. 2. Sky Frost Fist Kick After using the ability, the fist's feet are equipped with extremely strong freezing power. When touching water, they turn into ice. When attacking, they can hit a freezing fist to freeze people. 3. Frost Body Strengthens the body's strength, giving the body itself the power of freezing. Attacks also have the power of freezing, and it turns into ice when it touches water. After Blackbeard mastered these abilities, the outside world was basically in turmoil. Just three days ago, the announcement of Ace's execution had already caused a stir in the world. News of the world headlines. Hashtag world government and naval headquarters joint statement hash will publicly execute Fire Fist Ace, the leader of the Whitebeard Pirates 2nd Division, at naval headquarters Marineford in one week. Hash Whitebeard said, Naval headquarters, lousy will go. Hash. Hash a big war is about to begin, Whitebeard Pirates. Marine. World government. Who will win in the end? Hash. Hashtag four emperors change. Hashtag the era is about to run rampant. Are you ready? Hash. At that time, the popularity of Blackbeard, the fifth emperor of the sea, was immediately covered by the news of Chuk Sea. Soon some people forgot about this new sea emperor who had disappeared without a trace again. Naval headquarters and world government are most happy to see this. The most fortunate thing for naval headquarters and world government now is that Blackbeard has separated from the Whitebeard pirates. Otherwise, if they start a war with the Whitebeard pirates this time, they will definitely have an incredible experience. The battle will become even more brutal. Just as Blackbeard was thinking about what to do next, Moria walked over with the sound of stamping on shit. Captain, the ship of Mr. Three from Baroque Studio you mentioned is arriving soon. Oh, are you here? Blackbeard's eyes lit up. His next plan would not be possible without Mr. Three's help. It happened that Ark Proverbs was also going to do a diving experiment, so everyone in the Black Group went directly to the dock of Thriller Bark. Crunch, Kakaka. When everyone in the Black Group arrived at the pier, they saw at the entrance of the Thriller Bark, Three huge iron chains measuring thousands of meters slowly pulling up the gate that was several hundred meters high. Wah wah wah, the sea water brought up is like a waterfall hundreds of meters long, so spectacular. A group of people from the Baroque studio standing at the pier also saw this scene and were all amazed. Teach, just when Teach arrived at the port with the black group, a clear and sweet shout came into his ears, followed by a golden and blue figure speeding up the store and threw himself into his arms. Looking at the pretty blue-haired beauty in his arms, Teach couldn't help but smile. Isn't this my Princess Vivi? How come you have time to run out? Of course I miss you. Vivi couldn't help but blush when she looked at the three beauties Nami, Robin and Carmen behind her who were looking at her with half-smiles. But when she saw Khalifa, who had blonde hair and wore a white suit, short skirt and white lace, she frowned again. Seeing this, Teach couldn't help but cough dryly and said, Let's go. Let's take you to see our new ship. This ship is also the main ship of our Blackbeard Pirates. Oh, I saw it just now, is it that one? Vivi immediately turned to look at Noah, who was docked alone in a harbor not far away. That's right, Blackbeard nodded. Ten minutes later. Seabed. Oh my god. Vivi looked at the big ship sinking to the bottom of the sea in disbelief, her eyes filled with wonder. She never imagined that such a big ship could actually dive. Not only Vivi, but also the new Baroque studio executives and Moria's group were stunned. A pirate ship that can dive and fly. It's really hot. This is also my first time on a diving boat. The bottom of the sea is so beautiful. Frankie, you and Bingxian are simply the most powerful shipbuilders in Qinghai. It's great to be able to integrate diving with my power system. Snap, snap, 
After being surprised for a while, Blackbeard clapped his hands to attract everyone's attention. Seeing that the captain had something to say, everyone else also cast their gaze over. After these ten days of practice, everyone in the Black group has somewhat returned. The captain will definitely participate in the war between the Whitebeard pirates and Marine, but they don't know how to intervene. Now it seems that the captain is going to make his plan public. Looking at your expressions, you must have been holding this in for a few days. Blackbeard smiled and said, Then, let me tell you the next plan of our Blackbeard pirates. First of all, I think you all know about the Summit War, which will be held in five days. You should also understand that I have not actually left the Whitebeard pirates. As for Fire Fist Ace, as my beloved brother and friend, I must save him. Therefore, we, the Blackbeard pirates, will also participate in this summit war. Ye, even though they were well prepared, after receiving the confirmation from Blackbeard, everyone in the Black group was still in an uproar. As expected of our captain, the things he does get bigger and bigger every time. Why ha 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 ha. Are you going to participate in such a big war? I'm still a little scared. This war is definitely very tragic, so be careful. Fortunately, my observation hockey has improved a lot these days, otherwise it would be really dangerous. Ms. Carmen, you and Nami, don't think too much. There is no way the captain will let you join the war. That's right, the battle must be left to us. If navigators and chefs are needed to fight, then what are we talking about? Hearing everyone's discussion, Blackbeard said directly. I have already planned the non-combatants this time, Nami, Robin, Carmen, Leo, Jose, Perona, Hogback, Poison Q, Bluno, Khalifa, Fukuro, Frankie, plus 50 magic soldiers. At this point, when the person named was hesitant to speak, Blackbeard waved his hand and said. Don't be anxious, don't think that the mission will be easy if you don't fight. You must also pay attention to our arc motto, otherwise the escape route will be cut off and it will be really dangerous. Next, I start assigning customers. When everyone in the black group heard this, they immediately nodded to express their acceptance. Blackbeard looked at the people named before and said, First, Nami, Robin, and Frankie. You three are responsible for taking care of the ships, signals, and evacuation matters. Clear, Nami. Robin and Frankie immediately nodded seriously. Blackbeard looked at the other three people and said, Carmen and your two apprentices are responsible for preparing meals for the brothers and replenishing food and energy for those who need supplements at any time. Leave it to us, Carmen, Jose and Leo replied in unison. Then there are Perona, Hogback, and Poison Q. The three of you serve as the medical team and are always ready to treat injured companions. Blackbeard looked at the CP9 trio again. Road, Bluno, Khalifa and Fukuro, you three serve as the rescue team. At that time, if our black group members are injured and need treatment, Bluno will use the gate fruit to open and locate them, and Khalifa and Fukuro will help rescue the injured. Maybe it's not just us, the Blackbeard pirates, but also the members of the White Corps who fight alongside us. When the time comes, I'll leave the rescue mission to you. Blackbeard looked at the three of them extremely cautiously. Clear, Bluno, Khalifa and Fukuro were all shocked. When they heard these words, they understood that their captain finally trusted them completely. Otherwise, such an important task of rescuing the wounded would not have been entrusted to them. On one side, Rob Lucci, Kaku, Natsutori and Jabra also had rare smiles on their faces. Ever since they were forcibly taken by Blackbeard to participate in the execution of the Celestial Dragons, they knew that their CP9 group had no way out and could only follow Blackbeard. Pong Lu walked to by. But how to say it? After boarding the ship, they actually didn't feel very comfortable. After all, they had not made any contribution to the Black group, and other people were somewhat wary of them. This makes them naturally uncomfortable. Fortunately for them, Blackbeard's belly was much broader than they thought. Not only did he personally teach them how to use hockey, he even gave the devil fruit of the two CPOs they had captured before to Kaku and Fukuro respectively. Now entrusting such an important rescue mission to the Khalifa trio obviously shows that the captain has always trusted them. The two fruits that Kaku and Fukuro ate were the Zone Ancient Species Mountain Giant Ape and the Paramecia Air Cannon Fruit. There is no doubt that after the two of them ate the fruit, it brought another wave of improvement to Haituan's strength. 
As for Khalifa and Nami's devil fruit, Blackbeard already has an idea. But it should be Khalifa who gets the fruit first. Fanoka's fruit also has a clue. Everything is going in the right direction. Okay, the logistics staff have been arranged. Blackbeard glanced at the crowd and said. As for the rest of us, let's enjoy the battle. Blackbeard showed a wanton smile and said. There is no enemy ahead of us. Oh oh oh. Hearing Blackbeard's words, everyone in the black group suddenly felt aroused, and everyone roared excitedly. Okay, let's set off now and go to the deep sea sky prison Imperton. When Blackbeard saw this, he immediately smiled and waved and shouted. A. Deep Sea Prison. The people in the black group suddenly let out a stunned uproar. Four days later. Night. There are still ten hours left before Summit War starts on 2.9. When the whole world fell into a turbulent atmosphere. A giant ship lurking on the bottom of the sea, with blue electric light and escorted by more than a dozen giant sea kings, finally arrived at this place. Looking at the huge deep sea prison in the darkness ahead, which is larger than an ordinary island, the people in the black group standing in front of the floor-to-ceiling glass windows of Ark Proverbs let out a sound of exclamation. He was even more impressed by his captain's plan. Originally, they thought they were going to use the flying ability of Ark Proverbs to fly over the deep sea prison, but they didn't expect that it was a false shot. Undersea diving, escorted by giant sea kings. This pomp is simply too awesome. It is precisely because of the escort of more than a dozen giant sea kings that Blackbeard and the others are still as stable as a rock on the seabed full of sea kings' lairs. Frankie, start measuring the distance now. Standing in front of the floor-to-ceiling glass window, Blackbeard stood with his hands behind his hands and spoke calmly. The distance calculation result is, 500 meters. Frankie's voice immediately came from the earphones. Very good. Blackbeard raised his hand and waved. Go forward another hundred meters and stop at the deep valley in front of you, turning off the lights. Receive. The voices of Frankie and a group of magic soldiers came from the headphones. Soon, as the Ark of Proverbs docked at the designated location, Blackbeard looked at the deep sea prison on the seabed in front of him, waved his hand and said. Bluno, are you ready? No problem captain. Bluno also stepped forward confidently at this time. Seeing this, Blackbeard showed a smile and said. Then open the door and let's go take a look inside the deep sea prison. After hearing Blackbeard's instructions, Bluno immediately agreed, taking a step forward and pressing his hands on the void in front of him. Open the door. Following Bluno's low shout, a seven-meter tall air gate suddenly appeared in the space in front of him. Inside the gate is a green space and a black road leading forward. Seeing this, Bluno grinned and said. Captain, the door to eternal hell, the sixth floor of the deep sea prison, has been opened, and we can move out. Well done. Blackbeard nodded with satisfaction, then raised his hand and waved. Children, let's go and take you to see the most vicious criminals imprisoned in the world. Oh oh oh. Everyone in the Blackbeard pirate group was suddenly excited. Ta ta ta. As Blackbeard stepped into the door first, the cadres of the black group immediately followed. The 300-meter road soon came to an end. Bluno, who was standing next to Blackbeard, pointed to a huge dark space in front of him and said. Captain, we are now at a wall of the eternal hell at the bottom of the deep sea prison. I haven't opened the door yet. Standing here, we can take a look at the situation outside for now. Quote. This is a good idea and very sound. Blackbeard expressed satisfaction. Then he began to observe the situation in eternal hell through the space in front. The door space they are in is like a piece of light green glass separated from the eternal hell outside. You can think of it like the kind of window glass in an urban suite. Can clearly see the situation outside. But you can only see what you can see. Blackbeard had already thought about this, and said to Bluno on the side. You first open a hole the size of your fist, and I will use observation hockey to explore the situation in this eternal hell first, so that we can choose our target. Good. Bluno immediately understood Blackbeard's thoughts. He, the gate fruit, can only use his eyes to see the outside situation, but observation hockey cannot penetrate it. After all, it is not in the same space. But as long as a small door or crack is opened, observation hockey can penetrate and start to explore the situation in eternal hell. In this case, it will be safer. After all, the front is where the world government has imprisoned countless of the world's most vicious criminals. 
For hundreds of years, only the pirate admiral, Golden Lion, a ruthless man, has escaped. Of course, this is a person known to the world. There is another unknown escapee, and that is the commander of the Western Army of the Revolutionary Army, Mori of the Giant Clan. Not only did he use his ability to push fruits to successfully dig a hole underground to escape from the deep sea prison, but he also created a story secret space for the shemale King Ivankov and others to live. Judging from this situation, there must be various groups of people imprisoned in the deep sea prison. It is also the real goal of Blackbeard's trip. And here is where the new member of the black group, Gecko Moria, gains strength. On this trip, Blackbeard came here firstly to see if he could find some reliable partners, secondly to cause trouble, and thirdly, naturally, to hunt demon fruit power. What could be more worthy of his hunt than a group of these vicious, defenseless pirates chained by sea stone cuffs? Even though celestial dragons are garbage, Marine is not a good bird either. But among the guys who can be imprisoned in the deep sea prison eternal hell, if you pick out ten of them and kill them, none of them will be innocent. Therefore, Blackbeard is very at ease with his ability to hunt their fruits. However, Blackbeard will not really go into eternal hell and kill all those people. With his ability to hunt fruits, Moria hunts shadows. The remaining big pirates and vicious criminals were all calculated by Leah to cut out their shadows and stuff them into the zombies. When Moria completely controls the shadow army that was cut off from the deep sea prison, the strength of the Blackbeard pirates will immediately expand to a terrifying level. Even Kaido, who has the strongest military strength at that time, will not have anything to worry about. With this in mind, Blackbeard immediately targeted several targets he had seen in the plot in his previous life. The first is about the hunting of fruit abilities. The first one is the ability prepared for Fanoka. The hunting target is World Destroyer Burndi World Devil Fruit ability is Momo Fruit. The second one is the ability prepared for Khalifa. The hunting target is Katarina DMA, Devil Fruit ability is Zone, Dog Fruit Phantom Beast Species, Nine Tails Fox Shaped. These two are undoubtedly the top beings among Devil Fruit. In this case, the strength of Henka and Khalifa can be greatly improved immediately. Several other targets are the partners Blackbeard needs to find for this trip. One is the giant San Juan Wolf who eats the expansion fruit and can expand to 1,780 meters. One is his predecessor Shichibukai Kai Sha Jinbei who was captured for Ace because he refused to fight the Omen. As for the other few people, it's up to chance. You have to go out and see what they are talking about first. Just as Blackbeard's wisdom color swept across an area, suddenly a powerful wisdom color also scanned along the place where his wisdom color emitted. This surprised Blackbeard. Although he had expected it, he still didn't expect to be discovered so quickly. But Blackbeard didn't take it seriously, so what if he found out? Wasn't he always imprisoned with incompetence and rage? Sure enough, not long after discovering their situation, there was a burst of surprised laughter in the eternal hell. Ha 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 ha, interesting, really interesting, I didn't expect that someone would dare to come to this place. Sure enough, there are all kinds of strange abilities in this world. After this wild laughter sounded, it seemed as if the switch of the entire eternal hell was triggered, and all the vicious criminals laughed crazily. Hey, hey, what makes our Red Earl so happy? Does the old guy want to get his gold coins blown? Speak with respect, you. Stop joking, you were still eating shit when Lousy was crossing the sea, bullet. Ha ha ha, it's another lively day in eternal hell. Have all the old immortals come out to bubble. I thought you were all dead of old age. Ha ha ha. For a time, the entire conqueror's hockey on the sixth floor of the deep sea prison surged out like crazy, and red, black, blue and purple lightning of various colors intertwined in the sky above the eternal hell, like a power grid. Extraordinarily spectacular and terrifying, even just through a fist-sized hole, everyone in the black group standing behind the door space instantly felt a powerful and terrifying sense of oppression. Especially the weaker Sky Island priests were knocked unconscious by the collision of more than a dozen conquerors hockey. Seeing this, Blackbeard frowned and sighed. Bluno, close the door first. Yes, click. Bluno was so frightened that he immediately closed the door, then wiped the cold sweat from his forehead and said. Is this the eternal hell on the sixth floor of the deep sea prison? It's too terrifying. I'm afraid I won't be able to hold it any longer. The other people in the black group also looked solemn. 
They now understand the horror of this eternal hell. Who are the people imprisoned here? There are so many powerful conquerors hockey. Don't worry too much. It's normal for you to feel strenuous now. Blackbeard smiled and said, You can't expect that after practicing for a year and a half, you can catch up with others who have practiced hard for decades, right? Let's wait for this to settle down for a while. Find a place to practice hard and improve your strength even more. By that time, you will also be world-class experts. As for Wong Luffy, he has accumulated strength from being thrown into the deep mountains and forests by Garp to fight wild beasts since he was a child. Only in this way can Luffy be able to accumulate a lot of experience. It doesn't matter if it's Luffy, Sanji, or Zoro. Although it seems that it only took them a thousand years to reach the world's top and first-class strength, this is also the result of their hard training in the past ten years. Everyone in the Black group became excited again after hearing Blackbeard's words. Seeing this, Blackbeard smiled. Then he thought for a moment and pointed to the two cells near Burndi World and Catalina and said, Bluno, let's go out from between the two cells and hunt the fruits of the frozen Burndi world first. After finishing speaking, he paused and looked at Vivi and Mr. Three aside and said, Although so many conquerors hockey broke out in eternal hell before, which put you under a lot of pressure, there are also benefits. That is, after that level of conquerors hockey collision, any phone bug monitoring eternal hell will definitely be knocked unconscious. Therefore, this is the best time for us to act. After a while, Vivi, you and Mr. Three, use the fruit power to block all the elevator passages and stair passages leading to eternal hell, trying to buy us as much time as possible. Quote. Clear. After hearing Blackbeard's arrangement, Vivi suddenly smiled. She was very happy that she was finally able to help this man. It seemed that her decision to follow him this time was the right one. Open the door. As Blackbeard finished speaking, on the wall in the corner between the two cells, ten huge seven-meter high space doors slowly opened with a creak. Then Blackbeard and his group walked out of it. Just after coming out, Blackbeard and Enel looked at each other and nodded. The two of them immediately began to scan the surrounding surveillance situation with their sense of knowledge. Soon they discovered the surveillance phone bugs who had been knocked unconscious. It was exactly as Blackbeard expected. Seeing this, Blackbeard nodded with satisfaction and went directly to the cell door in front of Burndi World. Base. Click. Then he slashed out with his sword, directly cutting off the sea stone and iron lock at the door, opened the iron door and walked in. Blackbeard's movement here immediately alerted other powerful criminals in eternal hell. They quickly discovered Blackbeard, a group of people who suddenly appeared in eternal hell even though these people were once big pirates and vicious criminals, they were still shocked. Hey, 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 what's going on? Where do these guys come from? A group of people suddenly appeared. Is this also a special devil fruit ability? Could it be that they are also jailbroken? No matter how many there are, just ask first. Hey, you guys, let Lousy out quickly. Lousy can take you out of the deep sea prison. Yes, you just need to help us open the sea stone lock. Chain, we will definitely help you escape. Please, take me out of this hellish place. I can't stay any longer. After discovering the possibility of escaping from prison, these ruthless people who were detained in eternal hell began to beg for mercy one by one. No matter how powerful, powerful or unruly they are outside, at this time each one of them is pleading loudly. Obviously they don't want to be locked up in this dark place forever. Blackbeard ignored the pleadings of these people for the time being. He walked directly to Burndi World's cell, waved to Oka and said. Quote dot dot, Oka, come here. With Blackbeard's previous notification, Van Oka also knew that it was finally his turn to improve. Blackbeard also showed him the illustrated introduction to Momo Fruit. There is no doubt that this is an extremely powerful devil fruit. Especially for a sniper like him, it is simply one of the best fruits. No wonder his captain never prepared any fruit for him. It turned out to be placed in this place. By this time, Oka understood his captain's foresight better. Poof. As the seven-star sword directly stabbed Burndi World's heart together with the ice cube, the next moment the entire cell was shrouded in black snow. Everyone outside could only see a flash of purple light, and Oka walked out of it with excitement on his face. Blackbeard didn't stop and went directly to Catalina's room not far next door. Seeing Blackbeard and the others appearing at the door of her cell, 
Catalina thought that Blackbeard and the others had heard her begging for mercy and let her go. The doe is whirring, sir, as long as you let me out, I, Katerina Deeming, will be at your disposal from now on. Katerina Diame said proudly, don't look at me like this, my lord, I have the form of zone, phantom beast species, nine tails demon fox, so I can definitely help you. Nine tails is in demon fox form, right? Not bad, very good. Ha ha ha. Blackbeard grinned, cut off the sea stone and chains with a sword, opened the cell door and walked in. Catalina, who was originally smiling excitedly, watched Blackbeard walk in with his sword in hand. Suddenly something was wrong with her smile. She stared at Blackbeard and said, Hey, what do you want to drive? I, poof, Blackbeard didn't hesitate at all, and cut off Katarina's head with one sword. Catalina didn't understand until her death why the other party wanted to kill her. Upon seeing this, Khalifa quickly entered the cell. One minute later, Khalifa's face turned crimson and he walked out of the dark mist of the cell with great excitement. At this time, in the cell, Katarina Diame, who had become one of the main cadres of the black group in her previous life, was already dead. Hey, what is your purpose? Why are you killing people here? Another Shiryu. No, these people are obviously here well prepared. Don't you guys even have the courage to tell us your names? We also saw a sand sand fruit ability user here, who seems to be this guy's companion. They have destroyed the elevator entrance and stair entrance to eternal hell. Interesting, let me see what you little guys want to do. After hunting the target here, Blackbeard slowly breathed a sigh of relief. Early goals achieved. After hearing the voices coming from various prisons, Blackbeard also raised his eyebrows. He couldn't be bothered to pay attention to these noisy guys now. For now, the main purpose is to recruit your target first. Soon, Blackbeard led a group of cadres and followed Blackbeard towards another cell. At this time, Blackbeard and the others did not hide at all. Big guys in black suits walked struttingly on the main road of eternal hell. Although everyone in the black group looked around curiously, no one spoke casually. After all, before they came here, they heard from their captain that there might be someone here who has mastered the special observation hockey. As long as you talk to him, the other party will be able to read your memories and thoughts. This is an ability word even more special than devil fruit. Therefore, although everyone in the black group is curious, they are very cautious. Ta ta ta. Soon, their silent group came to a huge cell. Looking at the fat blue man bound by iron chains in the cell, Moria suddenly felt that he was okay again and couldn't help but said. Ha 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 ha, isn't this our Shichibukai Kai Sha Jinbei? How come you are locked up here? Jinbei, who was leaning against the wall quietly with his eyes closed, was as calm as his mouth after hearing such a harsh mocking voice. Kakuzu couldn't help but twitch. But after he opened his eyes, he ignored Moria who smiled evilly at him, but looked at the man in front of the iron gate with sharp eyes, and then he exclaimed in shock. Teach, why are you here, thief ha 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 ha. Blackbeard laughed and said, of course I'm here to rescue my old friend. Jinbei first grinned when he heard this, and then seemed to think of something again. He looked at Blackbeard solemnly and shouted. Wrong, teach, why do you want to betray your father and leave the Whitebeard Pirates? You are the captain of the Whitebeard Pirate group. Do you know how sad it will be for dad if you do this? Don't you know that brother Ace has been arrested? He will be executed soon. Of course I know, otherwise why do you think I am here? Blackbeard also said solemnly, as for me leaving the Whitebeard Pirates, of course it's fake, I have been angry with my father for a long time. You don't even look at what I've done before. I got a little carried away because of Ace being captured. No, I happened to encounter Celestial Dragons again and I simply captured them. Later, I saw so many slaves tortured to death by him on the Celestial Dragon's slave ship, and I was so angry that I just let this pig go. So, in the end, let's just do a live broadcast around the world, let the Celestial Dragon smash these to make him lose face, and then kill him. Don't they want to execute Ace? Aren't they unwilling to exchange hostages? Well, I will publicly execute the Celestial Dragons and completely crush their aura of gods. Smash these guys to pieces and pull them off the altar. I have to say, this feels great Jinbei. Thief ha 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 underscore. As Blackbeard laughed, the violent conqueror's hockey surged out with him as the center. Nani, 
Conqueror's Hockey. Teach, you guys have mastered it too. You are indeed the guy who is crazy enough to dare to execute celestial dragons, ha 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 ha. Jinbei was shocked and opened his mouth wide at first, and then he laughed heartily along with Blackbeard. Before he could react, the entire eternal hell was paying attention to the vicious criminals and strong men here, and there was an uproar. Holy shit, what did I just hear? That brat said he executed celestial dragons. Impossible, absolutely impossible. Live streaming the execution of celestial dragons. How did he survive the marine admiral? Ha 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 ha, he's just a liar, bragging and not drafting. Kill celestial dragons, he'll be done with it long ago. Stop joking. How could a man who owns Conqueror's Hockey lie about something like this? Live broadcast the execution of the Celestial Dragons and completely pull them off the altar. Ha 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 ha, what a crazy guy. But I like it. Lousy has never admired many people in his life. That kid named Teach, no, Mr. Teach, you are crazier than Captain Rocks, ha ha ha. Everyone in the black group witnessed these extremely arrogant and vicious criminals from the beginning disdainful of their own captain to now admiration and admiration, which made everyone in the black group feel proud. Yes, our captain is so awesome. I'll tell you no more. Haven't you been convinced by our captain? Everyone in the black group was very proud at this time. Base. Chang Chang Chang. Blackbeard ignored the cries of those in eternal hell. Instead, he first cut off the iron chains on Jinbei's body, then stretched out his hand and said. Brother Jinbei, how dare you go to naval headquarters with me, my old love. Jinbei just stood up and moved his wrists, and was about to thank Blackbeard, but after hearing his words, he couldn't help but be startled, and then he understood what Blackbeard said. Teach, you guy. Jinbei's eyes flashed with emotion. If he had some doubts about Blackbeard in his heart before, now that he heard these words, he had no doubts at all. Snapped. If you want to save Ace, of course you have to include me. Jinbei said solemnly, since I can no longer reconcile the conflict between the two parties, I can only deal with it. Hearing this, Blackbeard was also dumbfounded. Reconciling the conflicts between world government, marine and whitebeard pirates. Jinbei, how do you want me to say hello? If I don't come this time, won't your life be in vain? You are still too naive. Quote, Jinbei also sighed and said, of course I know it's impossible, but whether it's for the fish men island or dad and the others, I have to give it a try. Even if the conflict between the whitebeard pirates and world government cannot be reconciled, the influence of world government on the fish men island can be reduced. Therefore, even if it costs my life, I will protect the fish men island. If I don't stand up, the fish men island will probably suffer from the fish in the pond. Therefore, I have to do this. But this is the limit of what I can do. Quote. Hey. Blackbeard just sighed and patted Jinbei on the shoulder, without promising him anything. If you want to conquer Jinbei, you need an opportunity. As for the people in the black group who originally thought Jinbei was ridiculously naive, they were immediately in awe after hearing Jinbei's words. No matter what, for Ace, for the Whitebeard Pirates, and even more for the Fish Men Island, Jinbei was able to come and be arrested by the world government even though he knew he was going to die. This kind of loyalty is so respectable. Blackbeard admires this kind of person. But he had to admit that he couldn't do it. Even for the Whitebeard Pirates, he mostly used them. As a person who has traveled through the 21st world, his soul is proud. Perhaps he would look up to others in order to survive at first, but a series of situations after he went to sea were all planned by him. The moment Ace was captured, Blackbeard knew the world line had ended. Although he negotiated with Whitebeard to quit the Whitebeard pirates, it can actually be said that he killed first and played later. Because this is part of his plan. And since the Whitebeard pirates have announced that they will participate in this summit war, it is not surprising to him. Now that Whitebeard has decided to join the war, Blackbeard understands that this is the final destination Whitebeard has chosen for himself. It can be said that so far, his plan has not gone wrong. If Whitebeard really died in Marineford, he would be the only one who can take on the important responsibility of the Whitebeard pirates. As for Marco, it's okay for him to be the second boss, but he's not that good at all as the first boss. And Ace, he is too young. The future is his. Of course, the premise is that they successfully rescue this time. Although the summit war is coming, Blackbeard doesn't know if he can successfully save Ace when the war starts this time. 
you must know that he himself is a variable. If so, the summit war really starts a full-scale war, and the Marine Three Admirals, plus Garp and Sengoku, a total of five peak admirals take action, Blackbeard can't imagine how the Whitebeard pirates will respond. Not even the Whitebeard from two years ago in the previous life. What's more, this time it alarmed the five elders. After he came to eternal hell, he immediately started looking for traces of Ace. Unfortunately, he didn't sense any aura related to Ace. Coupled with the information obtained from the CPO prisoners and CP9, it can be understood that Ace was not sent to the deep sea prison at all. This is another variable, if the five elders also sent experts to Marineford. Then this summit war will be unprecedented. This is why Blackbeard's heart is heavy. Although his plan has not gone wrong so far, if he makes a mistake this time in summit war, he may lose everything. Nothing else, because he is a time traveler, Judging from his knowledge of the Celestial Dragons in his previous life, the Celestial Dragons are simply too powerful. First of all, there are seven or eight people in the Knights of God. Among them, Shank's father, Garen Shang, is definitely an admiral-level strongman. As for the other members of the Knights of God, it is not known whether there are admirals in his previous life when he traveled through time. But he felt that there was. The Knights of God have the highest combat power as the bodyguard of the Celestial Dragons, and their target is the Marine Three Admiral. How could it be possible without three Admiral-level experts? So Teach guessed that even the Knights had at least three Admiral-level experts, and the remaining four or five were probably quasi-Admiral-level beings like Enel. There is no doubt about this. Celestial Dragons have been in control of the world for 800 years, and they enjoy the world's top resources and they have a mature system for getting stronger. There are also five elders, five immortals who have undergone immortality surgery. The bottleneck of being strong does not exist at all for the elites of celestial dragons. Because they have the guidance of five elders, five four emperors level experts, they don't have to worry at all. That's right, those five old men in the five elders are definitely four emperors level beings. Based on the information revealed in his previous life, Teach has basically determined that the thick level is higher than the general level. Perhaps four emperors cannot cope with the siege of two admirals, but they still have the upper hand against one admiral. Whether it is Garp, Green Bull, Kazaru, or Akainu, when they face the four emperors group or the four emperors, they are much weaker in momentum. But in this world, momentum means courage, and courage is related to hockey. In the previous life, Many people said that Whitebeard lost half of his head to Akainu, but in that situation, Whitebeard still almost killed Akainu. The Peak Admiral and the Top Logia ability were used to cheat and attack a 70-year-old comrade who was sick before the war and was stabbed during the war, and was beaten so badly. But then again, Akainu still has merit, at least his tough attitude towards pirates after becoming a marshal is something Sengoku does not have. However, in this terrible world of pirates, Akainu could not see the way forward after all. Especially with the terrifying power of the celestial dragons. Akainu, after all, is just a dog of the five elders. In the previous life, before Blackbeard traveled through time, the most memorable scene was when Akainu faced the five elders and expressed where he wanted to put his face. A saying from five elders at the time was, your face is nothing. From this sentence, we can see that Marshal Marine is nothing to these five old men. And, they do have this kind of strength and confidence. Then here comes the problem. As someone who is above the five elders and can make the five elders kneel down in fear and sit on the throne of heaven. What level has that person reached? Under such terrible strength. No matter how hard a Kainu struggles, he is still a dog. Can't make waves. The same is true for the four emperors above the sea. It's just a plaything in I'm's hands. Therefore, after traveling to this world, Blackbeard made his goal very clear. That is, the strongest in the world. In this world where force can overwhelm everything, everything else is false, and only fists are the last word. Just as Blackbeard was thinking, Jinbei had already calmed down. He looked at Blackbeard and said, Teach, you are here to see Ace, right? But I can be sure that Brother Ace has never been caught. Maybe he has been imprisoned in the Holy Land, after all, his identity is so sensitive. Ace is not found now. So what are you going to do next? Leave now, thief ha 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 ha. Blackbeard laughed when he heard this and said, 
It's hard to come to the eternal hell of the deep sea prison, how could you just leave like this? What we need to face this time is the highest combat power of naval headquarters. I have to find some help here and cause some trouble for Marine and the world government. A. Jinbei was very confused. Blackbeard waved his hand directly and said. Zero. Just follow me. Ta ta ta. After saying that, Blackbeard turned around and walked towards the dark depths ahead. Upon seeing this, Jinbei and everyone in the black group immediately followed. There is basically no light in that area, at least not now. However, the darkness gave everyone in the black group a tingling feeling. This feeling was just like the first time they were targeted by the sea kings that were thousands of meters away. Even scarier, snapped, Blackbeard, who was walking in front, seemed to have thought of something and snapped his fingers. Enel, use flash, hey, I am Enel of God. Enel's mouth twitched when he heard this, and he suddenly spoke dissatisfied. Even so, he still started the light from his heart. Sizzling, a burst of blue electric light flashed, instantly illuminating the darkness ahead. PFF'd, everyone in the black group laughed out loud when they saw this scene. Illuminating the darkness and dispelling fear, you are indeed the Enel of God. Well done, Vice Captain. As expected of the Deputy Captain, he is so reliable. It's like a human-shaped light bulb. Is this the strongest Logia's thunder fruit? It's well deserved. I admire it. Yo ho 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 ho. You, hearing the teasing of his friends, black lines appeared on Enel's forehead. If it weren't for the wrong place and time, he would have wanted to hit these fools with heavenly prison. Ha 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 ha. Blackbeard also laughed happily. The atmosphere here was joyful, but the big pirates and criminals observing them in eternal hell around them all gasped. Hey. The ability of that guy who discharged electricity shouldn't be the legendary thunder fruit, right? Nonsense. Didn't I say that myself? Hiss. This pirate group seems to be a little bit strong. Can a user with thunder fruit's abilities only be the deputy captain? How strong does a captain have to be? The captain is the guy named Teach, right? The guy who dares to live stream the beheading of celestial dragons is probably also a monster. I thought I heard just now that that guy is still the captain of Whitebeard's staff. Hey, hey, stop joking, these monsters are all Whitebeard's captains. Has he already conquered the sea? Ignoring the exclamations and incredulous looks around him, Blackbeard went straight to a cell, looked into the dark depths of the cell, put his arms on his knees, and also. He was always staring at his man. The two just stared at each other in the darkness. Sue 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 Sue. Immediately afterwards, endless darkness surged out from under Blackbeard's feet, instantly engulfing the double gate of Seastone and Iron Gate in front of him. Darkness fell, and the double doors in front disappeared without a trace. After ten seconds passed, Blackbeard suddenly laughed and said, Bullet, let's make a deal. I'll take you out of eternal hell, and you help me stop a marine with the highest combat power when I save Captain Roger's son. After that, we'll be clean. How? Isn't this a good deal? A few seconds later, a rich and slightly hoarse voice came from the depths of the darkness. What did you just say? That fire fist ace is Roger's son. Ah, don't you know? Blackbeard grinned with success. Nani, before Bullet could say anything in the depths of the prison, the entire eternal hell had already exploded. Ha, huh, what did I just hear? Roger's son, that Roger. The guy who just spoke is Douglas Bullet, right? If it's him, that's right. Did that guy Roger actually have a child? And he was caught by Marine. How sad. Roger himself died at the hands of Marine, now it's his son's turn. It's a bit sad. This news is really exciting. But what's even more exciting is that Roger's child has been captured and the Whitebeard Pirates have to rescue him. Since Roger's child is in the Whitebeard Pirates, the relationship is a bit complicated. Ha 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 ha, is there any fun to see again? Hey, Captain Teach, can't you let us out? We also want to see this kind of fun. The entire eternal hell seemed to be in a state of panic, and people began to discuss the upcoming summit war crazily. Blackbeard still ignored those guys, he just looked at Bullet and said. Yes, Ace is my brother, my beloved relative and friend. How could I lie? Moreover, Marine will definitely announce this kind of thing when the summit war starts in a few hours. Do you think they went to great lengths to find Roger's descendants, captured Ace, and then secretly detained him in the Holy Land, Maria Joy for what? 
The purpose is not to publicly execute the bloodline of the Pirate King, but to increase the reputation of the world government and Marine. After Blackbeard finished speaking, Bullet in the darkness ahead fell silent. After a while, he answered the question again. I used to think Roger was a coward, until the era of great pirates came. Only then did I realize that I not only lost to him in terms of strength, but also in terms of courage. This time, I will go with you. Regardless of whether I can save Roger's child, I will do my best. Just think of it as a reward for helping me. Quote, good. Blackbeard smiled. Immediately, the black mist around him shot into the darkness like a sharp arrow, directly sucking all the chains around Bullet into the darkness, allowing the gravity of the black hole to pull it into powder. Kakaka, feeling the sudden surge of power in his body, Bullet slowly stood up and relaxed his muscles, and suddenly there was a burst of explosion. But in the next moment, Bullet's tall figure turned into a black lightning and rushed in front of Blackbeard in the blink of an eye, punching him in the face. Oh, the big pirates and criminals who were paying attention here with their knowledge were suddenly excited. They had long known that Bullet, a ferocious beast, could not be easily persuaded, so they wanted to have fun watching it. Just when everyone thought that Blackbeard was going to make a fool of himself due to his carelessness and was accidentally attacked by Bullet, the next moment, all of them widened their eyes. Because they saw that Blackbeard didn't even move in the face of Bullet's punch. He just said calmly. Shinra Tenjang. Buzz. With an explosion in the air and a surge of darkness, Bullet's body seemed to be frozen in midair. After less than a second, his body flew backwards faster than the sneak attack. Whoosh. Boom boom boom. Boom. Bullet's tall body smashed through several walls like a cannonball, and finally stopped when it hit the double steel sea stone door of a cell. Bullet, who was thrown away, was still a little confused at this time. He didn't even understand what was going on, so he was directly blown away. And he can feel not only the power of devil fruit, but also the top armament hockey. Is this guy, also a monster? Cough cough cough. After Bullet coughed a few times, he wiped the bloodline from the corner of his mouth, looked at Blackbeard with excitement on his face and laughed. Ha ha ha, you are very strong. I didn't expect that more than ten years later, a monster like you would appear on Whitebeard's ship. Although I don't know how strong it is yet, I feel like you didn't use your full strength. This makes me even more motivated to defeat you. Hearing this, Bartolomeo, the little fanboy standing next to Blackbeard, suddenly became upset and put his hands on his hips and said. Aren't you talking nonsense? Even Marine Admiral Kazaru suffered a loss on our ship. How dare you defeat our captain? Stop dreaming. The captain just used his abilities, and he hasn't even used his best attack method yet. He's just a pirate who has been imprisoned for more than 10 years. Who are you looking down on? And the same goes for those guys around you who are peeping with the color of knowledge. Who are you looking down on? Our captain is Blackbeard. The only person with dual fruit abilities in the world today. The strongest man in the future world. Bartolomeo's angry voice echoed in this eternal hell. This made many pirates who had been angry before suddenly shut up. If Bartolomeo had said this when he first came in, others would have laughed crazily. But at this moment, the entire eternal hell fell into an eerie silence. What did they just hear? The only person with dual fruit abilities in the world today. How can this be? Impossible. Absolutely impossible. Some people want to refute. But they discovered that after the boy roared, the man named Blackbeard did not refute. Is it necessary for such a man to deceive them? That's true. But this is too crazy. A user with double fruit abilities. It can be said that it is truly unprecedented. Ha 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 ha. After hearing Bartolomeo's words, Bullet was not only not angry, but even more excited. He looked at Blackbeard and laughed. I didn't expect you to be a monster. Double fruit ability. Interesting, so interesting. Very good, I promise to go with you. But let's face it, my body, which has been imprisoned for decades, cannot last long if I want to stop a marine admiral. You'd better know what's going on. Quote, thief ha ha ha. When Blackbeard saw Bullet agreeing, he immediately laughed and said, it's okay. You don't need to hold him back for too long. It's really not possible. It's okay to hold Marine's backup admiral by then. And, I still have guys I want to take away. Let's go. He must have been waiting for me for a long time. You say so, Mr. Red Earl. 
quote, while speaking, Blackbeard turned his head to look at another dark place. It's just that there hasn't been any movement since Blackbeard and the others were first discovered in that place. Ha ha ha, are you actually targeting that old man from Redfield? Bullet directly pulled himself out from the dented iron door, then grinned and joked. I don't know if that old man died of old age. Eh? Hey. Just as Bullet and Blackbeard were talking and walking, Brooke in the black group suddenly said in surprise. Captain Teach, if I heard you correctly, is the person you are talking about Baloric Redfield? Blackbeard, who was walking in front, paused when he heard this, and the corners of his mouth could not help but raise slightly. Did you finally remember Brooke? He had already had this plan in mind when he invited Brooke on board the Terror Spinnaker. Of course, the Blackbeard pirates are indeed missing a musician. Brooke is undoubtedly the best choice. Since they were all friends who were given to him, how could Blackbeard let him go? As for King Luffy, who cares about him? Let him and Lou Zoro fall in love with each other. Blackbeard smiled evilly in his heart, but a look of surprise appeared on his face. He turned to look at Brooke and said, Um, yes, Bullet and I were talking about him before, what? Do you know Brooke? Well, how should I say? Brooke held the crutch sword with both hands, stamped his feet and said, Captain Teach, the name you just mentioned is exactly the same as the name of a boy I once knew who had the same ideals as me. But now this is eternal hell, where the world's most vicious criminals are imprisoned. So I am a little hesitant. I don't know if the person you are talking about is the person I once knew. Quote. Snapped. Blackbeard directly put his arm around Brooke's shoulders and laughed. Thief ha ha ha. It doesn't matter if he is, we just have to go and see. Anyway, your captain and I will try to invite him. That's right, yo ho ho ho. Brooke also laughed. Afterwards, the Haituan group walked several hundred meters and came to a prison with only one cell around it. It seemed that this place was specially created for him. Mr. Redfield, you must have noticed my previous actions. Blackbeard came to the prison door and said directly. How, for my thoughts. After hearing Blackbeard's words, the dark depths of the cell did not speak immediately. But after a minute of silence, an old voice with some uncertainty came from inside, answering something that was not what was asked. Are you, really Mr. Brooke? Brooke's body trembled when he heard this, and then he walked directly to the door of the cell, as if to see clearly what was going on inside the cell through the darkness. Unfortunately, this cell was too deep and he couldn't see anything. Tisk. Just then, Enel used Flash. He is indeed the strongest Logia's Thunder Fruit user. Brooke liked it. Then, he saw the old face with white beard and hair, and he could also see from this face that he looked at the young man in his memory. Baloric, I didn't expect that we would meet again in this way. Brooke let out a long sigh and said, You have become senile, but I have become bones. It's really heartbreaking for me. Although the skeleton has no heart, yo ho ho ho. The initially sentimental atmosphere was immediately swept away by Brooke himself. This made everyone in the black group laugh out loud. This was the Brooke they knew. At this time, laughter also sounded inside the cell. Ha 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 ha, it is indeed you, Mr. Brooke. I really didn't expect to see you again. I wanted to look for you after I went to see, but there was no news about you. I knew at that time that something unexpected might have happened to you. However, I still did not give up searching. In the end, decades later, I still found nothing. I felt uncomfortable for a while. So, Mr. Brooke, have you retired? Or what's the reason? Brooke, who was originally a skeleton with a smile, after hearing Redfield's words. He fell silent immediately. He did not speak immediately, but took a few steps back, knelt on his knees, supported his knees with both hands, and knocked his head heavily on the ground and said in pain. Mr. Baloric, I can't thank you enough. I broke the appointment. Seeing this scene, everyone in the black group fell silent. In the cell, after a few seconds of silence, Redfield's loud laughter came. Ha ha ha, Mr. Brook, we are already this age, and you are a skeleton. Do you still need to be like this? What's more, haven't we met again every few decades? It's great to see old friends. At this point, Redfield changed the subject and said, Teach kid, I'm very grateful to you for saving Mr. Brook, and even more grateful to you for allowing us to meet. Therefore, I agree to your request. Let's take a trip to Marine Headquarters with you. When I was besieged by Sora and Garp, 
I was also disheartened because of some situations in which I got the Lumba Pirates. Now is the time to go and see if those two immortals are still there, I will help you block one of them. Just think of it as a thank you gift for this time. Quote. Thief ha 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 ha. When Blackbeard heard this, he burst out laughing. With the addition of Redfield, I will be a little more confident when facing Marine's highest combat power and world government this time. After saying that, Blackbeard waved his hand and endless darkness surged out, instantly swallowing up all the sea stone and steel gates. Ta ta ta. Immediately, the Red Count Baloric Redfield, who was wearing a blue and white striped prisoner's suit and Madara white hair, walked out. Then he and Brooke hugged each other tightly. For a promise, Redfield went to sea for decades and never gave up searching. Maybe this is the romance of men. Blackbeard did not interrupt the two old men who were almost 100 years old to reminisce about the past, but turned to look at Moria aside and said. This trip to the deep sea prison is relatively complete. Next, Moria, take action yourself. Pick whichever one you like. Let Brooke help you position the shadow and send it back. I'll find another partner, and this time the formation will be over. If you delay it too long, it will be troublesome for Impel Down to react. Ha 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 ha. Moria licked her lips excitedly and said. I'm just waiting for your words, Captain. After saying that, Moria ran away with Bluno. There are big pirates here with hundreds of millions of bounties on their heads. There are also old pirates and various powerful characters from the past. These shadows are simply not too strong. When the time comes, find one of the strongest among them to arm Demon Oz, and his combat power will simply explode. Moria was trembling with excitement just thinking about it. Ignoring Moria, Blackbeard led the Black Group in another direction. Soon, they came to this huge cell with a height of 100 meters. Everyone in the Black Group was surprised when they saw this huge cell. When they looked over, they found that there was only a giant more than 10 meters tall in the cell. Moreover, this giant clan seems to be a bit naive. With Enel, the strongest Logia, shining here, Blackbeard and the others can clearly see the clear stupidity in the eyes of this giant man. Seeing this idiot, Blackbeard immediately came face to face with the memories of his previous life. He immediately nodded with satisfaction, looked at the giant and grinned. Juan, are you interested in becoming my partner? As long as you promise me, I will take you out. Hearing Blackbeard's words, the San Juan wolf inside was surprised and said. How do you know my name? I just know it. Blackbeard smirked. Oh, okay. Juan thought for a second and then said. Can I eat enough if I go out with you? Every meal is enough. Blackbeard gave a thumbs up. Then I'll hang out with you. Juan grinned, revealing a mouthful of white fang. The peach heart that matches his butt and chin looks very happy. A. Does this mean you agree? Everyone in the black group was full of questions, thinking that this was too casual, right? When San Juan Wolf came out, Redfield, who was reminiscing with Brooke, showed a surprised look and said. A huge battleship, it's you. No wonder I haven't heard from you since that incident. Was it because you were arrested? Blackbeard couldn't help but be a little surprised when he heard this. Could it be that these two people knew each other? Before Blackbeard could ask about the situation, a slightly frivolous laughter came from the cell dozens of meters away. Blackbeard Marshal D. Teach, is he the last free D in the world today? How about adding me to your ship? Chapter 73 Whoosh! The sound of words coming from the distant cell immediately attracted the attention of everyone in the Black Group, and everyone cast their gaze over. Even Blackbeard couldn't help but raise his eyebrows. Does anyone know about him? Moreover, from his tone, he seems to know something about the D-Clan. Who is this guy? Does this guy still exist in eternal hell? Blackbeard went through it in his mind, and there seemed to be no such person in his memory in his previous life. When Blackbeard came to the cell door and saw the man in the cell, he couldn't help but look surprised. Even he didn't expect that this guy would be locked up here. In his previous life, he was very confused as to why this guy took the initiative to save the Blackbeard Pirates. Without his intervention, the Blackbeard Pirates might have been wiped out by the Magellan group at that time. This shows the horror of Magellan's poison. Aim no shiryu. Blackbeard deliberately looked surprised and said. Aren't you supposed to be the warden of Impel Down? Why are you locked up here? I didn't expect you to know me. It seems that you know Impel Down very well. Shiryu chuckled and said.
As for the reason why I'm locked up here, it's just for killing some garbage pirates. Let them waste food and resources here, why not let me send them to hell? This can still be of some value and become the cornerstone of Kendo. Blackbeard looked at this guy thoughtfully. After thinking for a second, he made his decision. Why do you think so much? He is a pirate. No matter how evil Shiryu is in rain, how can he be as evil as the celestial dragons? Compared with celestial dragons, he looks very handsome. Let him get on the ship first. If he messes with your own people in the future, don't blame him for cleaning up the house. Now it is also an immediate combat force, just in time to get on board. After all, this guy is definitely a quasi-admiral level being. In his previous life, he remembered the knife this guy gave Garp, which was almost the main reason for Garp's defeat. And Garp's strength completely fell from the altar in the battle on Beehive Island. At that time, Garp could only be regarded as an admiral level expert in physical skills and was no longer anything special. It was precisely because Chicken Sauce was smashed to pieces by Kuroduin and Aokiji on Honeycomb Island that many One Piece fans were able to completely determine the direction of this version of One Piece. Not a taijutsu, not a hockey, but a phantom beast that can do crazy sit-ups. Only the fantasy beast species is the answer. Even though he was as strong as Jijong, he was crushed to pieces by Shiryu without being able to sit up. Chicken Sauce has completely become the object of ridicule by many sea fans. After the Beehive Island incident in the previous life, the value of Summit War Whitebeard is still rising. It can also be concluded that the strength of four emperors is still higher than that of Admiral. But the four emperors couldn't withstand the siege of the two admirals. Wow, with these thoughts in mind, Blackbeard did not hesitate in his movements. He just raised his hand and swallowed up the iron door of the cell and the huge chain on Shiryu of the rain. Then, Blackbeard smiled and said, since you said so, there's nothing wrong with getting on my ship. But there's something I have to remind you. I don't like killing innocent people indiscriminately, and I don't like people who attack their own people. You know what I mean. Shiryu, ha 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 ha, Shiryu burst out laughing and said. Of course it is, don't think of me as that kind of murderous maniac. The people Lousy killed were just a bunch of garbage pirates. Shouldn't they be killed? Blackbeard didn't know whether to laugh or cry when he heard this. You said in front of me that pirates deserve to be killed. Isn't that a little bad? Well, some garbage really deserves to be killed. Let's go then. Shiryu was also happy when he heard this, then he waved his hand and said. Wait a moment, I'm going to get my thunderstorm. It should be placed in the supply room on this floor. Good. Blackbeard was not in a hurry, after all, he still had some things to do before leaving. Immediately, he waved to Mr. Three who was not far away and said something that made everyone feel numb. Gardino, prepare to use your ability to open half of the cell doors of this eternal hell and all the chains on those guys. Nani, Mr. Three was so shocked that his eyes widened, I was so scared that snots came out of my nose. Did I hear you right, Captain? Do you want to release all these monsters? How can it be? Blackbeard glared at him. Oh, I just said I heard wrong. Mr. Three breathed a sigh of relief patted his small chest. Blackbeard smiled and patted his shoulder and said. Didn't you hear? What I said was only to release half of them. Don't open where Moria and the others have been. Mr. Three. Wow. Before Mr. Three could even realize what the difference was between half opening and full opening, the whole eternal hell went completely crazy. What did they just hear? This guy named Blackbeard. No, Master Blackbeard actually decided to let them go. Some big pirates and criminals who were originally planning to die here were already filled with excitement. Ha 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 ha, Blackbeard, I have recorded your kindness. No matter what, I will repay you. Don't speak too early, let's jump out and talk later. If you can't escape even after being released, then you might as well just die. Ha ha ha. Are you too happy too soon? Do you really think Magellan's poison is a joke? GG, Gia, Gia, unfortunately, my ability is just right to restrain Magellan's poison. If I can get out, I will make that guy look good. Ha ha ha, is the world going to riot again? I love it so much. Hearing the crazy and excited howling criminals and big pirates in eternal hell, everyone felt a little frightened when they felt the crazy black group. Hexia Jinbei on the other side wanted to speak out to dissuade him, but in the end he did not speak. 
Although he is called Hai Sha, he is not a saintly person. If releasing these monsters can give the world government a headache, then that's not a bad thing. While Jinbei was thinking about this, Moria brought Bluno back with satisfaction, and then smiled at Blackbeard. Captain, I've almost reached the limit here. Okay, Bluno, get ready to evacuate. Blackbeard looked directly at Bluno and spoke. Open the door. The latter didn't hesitate at all, and directly shot a huge air door seven or eight meters high a few meters in front of Blackbeard. Seeing this, Blackbeard smiled at everyone in the black group and said. You go in first. Everyone in the black group had already understood Blackbeard's plan, so they immediately walked into the space door without hesitation. When Redfield saw this, he couldn't help but smile and said. If a guy like you masters this ability, the world government will probably have a headache. Blackbeard crossed his arms and looked ahead. Eternal Hell smiled and said. That's exactly what I want to see. Chaos is the ladder to ascend, Mr. Baloric. Thief ha 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 ha. Is chaos the ladder to ascend? Redfield chewed on these words and walked into the passage. Bullet was also thoughtful. Soon, everyone in the black group walked into the passage, only Blackbeard and Mr. Three were left outside. And the latter has also divided out dozens of wax clones, ready to stand by at all times. Seeing this, Blackbeard waved his hand and said. Let's start. Yes, boss, Mr. Three immediately activated Wax Wax Fruit's ability. Click 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 click. Soon, the sound of unlocking was heard throughout eternal hell. Bang dang, bang dang, bang dang. Then there was the sound of chains being thrown to the ground. Seeing this, Blackbeard nodded towards Mr. Three, who quickly rushed into the space channel. Blackbeard took one last look at Eternal Hell, then smiled and said. Well then I wish you good luck everyone. Let's have fun next time. Turn the world upside down. Thief ha 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 ha. After saying that, Blackbeard turned and left. Crunch. The door to space is completely closed, and eternal hell seems to be still the same as before, if there are not those excited and crazy roars and the shattering of countless cells. Standing in the door space and watching the lively scene of eternal hell for a while, Blackbeard laughed and turned to leave. No matter what happens in this trip, Blackbeard is the biggest winner. Although there is currently no way to conquer Bullet and Red Earl, he already has a plan in mind. After this summit war, these two people will inevitably be tied to death by themselves. As for Jinbei, it's even simpler. As long as the Fishmen Island is brought out from the bottom of the sea, what else will he not agree to? The current Blackbeard pirate group is basically composed of ability users, and they are in urgent need of a marine team. There is no doubt that Fishmen are the best choice. After returning to the Ark's proverbs through the Space Gate, Jinbei, Wan, Bullet and the Red Earl were shocked, and the Ark's Proverbs BBEI was activated again. Escorted by a dozen giant sea kings, it slowly sailed away from the bottom of the deep sea prison. Just after Blackbeard and the others left the confines of the deep sea prison, everyone in Imperialton finally discovered something strange. At this time, a group of people were gathering at the entrance to the Imperial 55-5 elevator. They were the group of impel downs with the highest combat power, headed by Director Magellan. At this time, each of them looked at the elevator shaft that was already covered with yellow sand with solemn expressions. At this time, another impel down jailer came running from the other direction. At this time, he was already sweating profusely and said with some fear. Report, report to the director, the stairs to eternal hell have also been destroyed. No, it should be said that it was blocked. Just like here, they are all sand mounds formed by yellow sand. The yellow sand has solidified into stone, and we can't get down at all. And, dot n, we can still vaguely hear the cheers and roars of countless people coming from eternal hell. Magellan's expression was extremely gloomy. He glanced at everyone present and said. No matter what, even if there is a jailbreak in eternal hell, they can only get out through these two places. Haniabal, Sadi Chan, take Jailerman to the stairway. If you encounter an escapee, arrest him directly. After I fill this elevator shaft with venom, I'll go find you again. I don't believe these guys can escape my venom. Yes, impel down after everyone agreed, they immediately started taking action. Poison Dragon, Magellan did not hesitate, and his whole body immediately turned into purple liquid, and then the lines were more than 10 meters long. 
The long purple poisonous dragon rushed out from behind him and fell into the elevator shaft below. Within a few moments, the elevator shaft was filled with purple venom. In this way, even if someone escapes from prison, they will still be poisoned by his venom. By that time, the combat power of these guys will be at least reduced. Moreover, the longer it takes, the more severe the nerve paralysis, pain and hallucinations will become. Magellan's eyes were cold. He didn't understand how those guys were able to do it when their whole bodies were locked with huge chains and sea stones. But now is not the time to think about this. Poison passage. Magellan no longer even wanted to walk, and turned into a purple venom channel and slid towards the entrance of the building. But when he came over, there was no accident at the stairs. This made Magellan very confused. However, he quickly filled the stairwell with venom. Just when everyone felt at ease, there was a huge explosion from the elevator shaft. Boom, Magellan and others just breathed a sigh of relief when their expression suddenly changed. No, they came from the elevator shaft. I'll go first, you guys will follow immediately. Poison channel, Magellan immediately slid away again. Ha ha ha, those idiots will definitely not be able to escape if they are poisoned by the director. Haniabal immediately boosted morale and said, Even if the director dies, I can still take over his position, so my family doesn't have to worry. Do we worry about this? Everyone else rolled their eyes and ignored the ambitious deputy director and ran towards the elevator shaft. But when they ran over, the guards at Impel Down were all dumbfounded. Director Magellan, who they thought was invincible, was fixed in place like a statue. The purple venom he used was now solidified on the ground like purple stones. If it weren't for the slight twitching of Magellan's eyes and facial muscles that indicated that he was still alive at this time, these impel down jailers would have almost thought that he had been killed. But even if he wasn't killed, Magellan's combat power was basically useless. Because there were already several penetrating sword wounds on his body, although the blood was still solidified at this time, if his ability was removed, his injuries would never allow him to pursue again. Hurry up and inform the government. Magellan uttered a few words with difficulty and then completely passed out. No one knew or encountered any monster. Haniabal and others were horrified. The director is provoking you. Crying voice. Stop crying, you losers. Sadi Chan, who was wearing a fun pink leather jacket, immediately swung his whip and whipped Haniabal and the jailers several times, and then shouted angrily. Hurry up and notify Marine and the world government. Ah, Sadi Chan whipped me. Oh. Yes, Haniabal just got angry for a second, and immediately got down to business. He took out his phone and dialed the number of Marshal Naval Headquarters office. Brew brew brew. At this time, Sengoku was discussing the war in the office with a group of Marines top combatants with a serious look on his face. At this moment, the phone suddenly rang. Exclamation mark. Seeing that it turned out to be a call representing Impel Down, Sengoku frowned. He suddenly had a bad feeling. He first raised his hand to stop everyone, and then directly. Answer the call. Magellan, why are you calling me at this time? Ah, how did you know that I was going to be the director? No, report to Marshal Sengoku, something big happened to impel down. Haniabal looked solemn. The director is provoking you. Crying. Sadi Chan roared. Stop crying and talk to me about business. A few minutes later, all Marine senior executives looked horrified. Impel down LV-6 eternal hell, have all the prisoners escaped? Still at this juncture. What kind of hellish joke is this? At this time, all the marine executives felt their scalps numb. How did those prisoners do it? Even Magellan couldn't stop him for a moment and was defeated. That's Magellan. What monster escaped from eternal hell? A few minutes later. Holy land. Mariajoy, Pangea. In the conference room, the roar of the five elders sounded again. What did you say? All the prisoners in Impel Down Eternal Hell escaped. Sengoku, are you sure you're not kidding me? Where's Magellan? What on earth is that loser doing? That's what he uses the fruit we gave him. Magellan petrified. That monster escaped from prison. What happened? Whitebeard. It can only be Whitebeard. News of the world headquarters. In the sky, above a huge airship. In the president's office. Brew brew brew. Hearing the sound of the phone bug, Morgans, who was busy proofreading tomorrow's manuscript, suddenly saw a phone bug that had been silent for more than half a month suddenly ringing. 
This made Morgan's eyes suddenly light up and he immediately answered the phone. Moses Moses, Morgan's, it's me, your old friend Teach. Quack, Teach, I knew it was you. Tell me what big news there is. I can't wait. Ha ha ha, it's you as expected, Morgan's. Yes, I really have big news. Just prepare the live broadcast signal to spread. I will contact you again in a few hours. Okay, no problem, I'll wait for your call. Chaka. Looking at the dead phone, Morgan's fell into deep thought. Blackbeard is making big news. Or in a few hours. What the hell, isn't it the time for Summit War to start in a few hours? Could it be that this guy? Hiss. Morgan's scalp went numb just thinking about it. Is this guy going to participate in Summit War? But didn't he leave the Whitebeard Pirates? Etc. What if Blackbeard didn't break away from the Whitebeard Pirates? Hiss. Morgan's couldn't help but gasp. The more he thought about it, the more excited he became. He immediately called a few old friends in the underground world. They could make a lot of money again this time. At the same time, Naval Headquarters Marine Ford in the office of Marshall Marine. Seeing that Sengoku was silent for a long time after hanging up the phone, Garp on the side said directly. Sengoku, what did those five old men say? Aokiji, Akainu, Kazaru, and the other eight veteran vice admirals also looked at Sengoku with dark eyes at this time. Sengoku was silent for a while, then sighed and said. They said it might be the Whitebeard pirates who were responsible for this, in order to contain some of the world government's power. Lord Five Elders has sent CPO and the Knights of God from the Holy Land to support. This time there are several monsters among the group of guys who escaped from eternal hell. Magellan must have encountered Paramecia condensed fruit which was completely restrained by his fruit. Unexpectedly, this old monster was not dead yet. If they come to Marineford to cause trouble, it will be really troublesome. Is this guy Whitebeard really going to ignore him? There is a riot in the deep sea prison. If all the prisoners escape, then the world will really go crazy. Hearing these words, the marine executives all looked extremely ugly. Kaku and he Vice Admiral looked even more solemn. They never expected that the monster not much older than rocks would survive. How can this be? Crane Vice Admiral still looked at Sengoku in disbelief and said. Are you sure it's the monster? If calculated in terms of years, he is almost 200 years old, right? This guy is not a giant, nor does he have giant blood. How could he live for so long? I thought he was already dead. Sengoku smiled bitterly. How do I know? That guy must have some secret, otherwise he wouldn't have forced those five old men to use the Knights of God. Hearing the words, Knights of God, the Marines and Admirals all looked at each other, obviously they knew these people. It's really scary. What kind of monster would make five old men and even the Knights of God send doctors? Allah Allah, the Knights of God. It gave me some bad memories. These guys are idiots. Since we caught that kind of monster, not killing him would be the biggest mistake. Sengoku rubbed his eyebrows and said. No matter what, the government may not be able to spare any money this time. The most it can do is send scientific troops and pacifists to assist. The main force will still depend on our naval headquarters. Hearing this, Yan sneered three times and said. Marshal Sengoku, are we taking the Whitebeard pirates too seriously? If Blackbeard hasn't left the Whitebeard pirates yet, it may still be a thorny problem. Now the only one that the Whitebeard pirates can reach our level is the old man himself, right? As for Phoenix Marco, his fruit ability is very tricky, but his strength is definitely no match for the three of us. Plus Shichibukai comes with signs. The Whitebeard pirates have already completely failed in terms of high-end combat power. What's more, what about the backup plan we arranged? All the marine executives heard Akainu's words and nodded in agreement. This is also the reason why they dare to openly wait for the Whitebeard pirates to come. Marine's high-end combat power has completely surpassed the Whitebeard pirates. As for troop strength, Marine has the upper hand. How can Whitebeard lose 50,000 and Marine 100,000? Can't lose a bit. While the Marines were discussing countermeasures, the Blackbeard Pirate's arc motto was already approaching the naval headquarters. Captain, the door of justice is ahead, what should we do now? Blackbeard looked up at the glass skylight above his head and saw a huge black shadow deep into the seabed. Seeing this, he waved his hand and said, Let the Ark Proverbs ascend. Yes, Frankie started working immediately after agreeing. 
Soon, the Ark's motto slowly rose from the bottom of the sea. At the same time, Frankie's report kept ringing in the central entertainment room. The Ark Proverbs power system has been activated. The drainage system has been activated. There is no marine found within a few kilometers, prepare to take off. Wah wah wah. After waves of water discharge sounds, a huge golden arc slowly rose from the bottom of the sea. But the huge arc's motto is still as different as the gap between an elephant and a mouse in front of the gate of justice. Oh my god, what a big door, how the hell is this thing built? And how does it start? This is too exaggerated. This kind of technological power is simply incredible. Indeed, but this can't stop us. I can't believe that we can fly over, ha ha ha. Blackbeard felt the same as everyone in the black group at this time. Although I have watched Doors of Justice many times in anime in my previous life, this was my first time watching it up close and I still felt very shocked. I have to say, isn't this a great power of science and technology? However, thinking about the subsequent summit war, he still had to deal with this gate of justice in order to eliminate future troubles. Since the world government has this technology, let's create another one in the future. Thinking of this, Blackbeard, who was standing on the bow of the ship, took a step forward. Behind him, there immediately appeared a halo of merit like the one behind the gods in previous lives, or a black disc with black mist rising like an aura. Then, under the surprised eyes of everyone in the black group, Blackbeard flew straight towards the gate of justice. Seeing this scene, Nami couldn't help but be surprised and made a trumpet shape with his hands and asked. Teach, what are you going to do? Shouldn't I fly over directly? You'll find out soon enough. Blackbeard did not look back, but flew directly to the gate of justice. Blackbeard, who came to the door of justice, felt as small as an ant compared to it. But who knew that ants might not be able to swallow elephants? Swallow everything, swallow the heaven and the earth. When he was in Thriller Bark before, Blackbeard used the two scales accumulated from Sky Island in the expansion of Dark Sky. Because although the ability of Dark Sky can swallow up most attacks, there are still many attacks that exceed the upper limit that cannot be swallowed up. A powerful 8-foot Magatama similar to Kazaru. This is why Blackbeard had to use swordsmanship to fight Kazaru's 8-foot Magatama at that time. If he had mastered the Swallowing Heaven and Earth skill at that time, he could have swallowed up the Marine Admiral's attack with a wave of his hand just like using the Dark Sky. Of course, this premise is that the speed of darkness coverage is fast enough. This is also the drawback of the skill, Swallowing Heaven and Earth. Because after using the skill, Swallowing Heaven and Earth, the surging speed of darkness cannot be as fast as a finger. Although the area covered by darkness is not slow, when compared to the world's top powerhouses, it is simply not enough. This skill seems a bit useless, but it is still very useful most of the time. Because of this skill, even if Blackbeard does not actively swallow other people's attacks, it is still very happy for Blackbeard to use the ability of swallowing heaven and earth in defense. For example, under Kazaru's powerful power, Hachiku Magatama, although the darkness that devours the world cannot keep up with the speed of the 8-foot Magatama, it only needs to be wrapped in darkness. Those attacks that fall on the body will be immediately swallowed up by the darkness. It is equivalent to Blackbeard wearing a layer of dark armor that can swallow all attacks. This also greatly reduces the effect of double damage caused to him. After all, this is one of Dark Fruit's biggest weaknesses. If the ability user himself is attacked by someone, double damage will be caused continuously, and he may die from the pain. It can be said that this devouring heaven and earth is most appropriate to be used as a defense. However, there is no problem in using this ability in the current situation. Even if it is the gate of justice, in the face of the devouring power of a black hole that can swallow even stars directly, how can a gate of justice be enough? Thinking of this, Blackbeard has already raised his hand and pressed against the door of justice. Su Su Su. Then, endless darkness and darkness poured out from his hands and began to cover the door of darkness in all directions. Redfield from behind was surprised when he saw this scene, and then asked. What is your captain doing? Does he want to use his ability to open the door of justice? Stop joking, can the door of justice be pushed open by power? Bullet rolled his eyes. Hearing this, the corners of Redfield's mouth raised, and his gaze cast back to San Juan Wolf, 
who was still holding a piece of haikai coupon and feasting on barbecue. That's not necessarily true, Bullet. Bullet was not an idiot. After seeing Redfield's hint, he couldn't help but frown. This silly giant clan, does he have such terrifying power to push open the door of justice? However, this giant race is now nearly 200 years old. It can be said that he is in a completely different era from him. Perhaps this guy once had an incredible adventure. Otherwise, it wouldn't be called a huge battleship. Just as Bullet was thinking about this, he heard the exclamations of everyone in the black group. I saw the gate of justice in front of me. After the darkness surged out of Blackbeard's hands and spread, darkness finally covered the entire gate of justice. Seeing this scene, both Bullet and Redfield could not help but shrink their pupils. This scene is so familiar to them. Blackbeard had used this move before to devour all their cells and chains in eternal hell. Does this guy want to? And everything was just as Bullet and Redfield thought. The Gate of Justice, which was like a small island, was slowly sinking as the darkness descended, and the huge door of the Gate of Justice also descended with the darkness. And little by little it disappeared before our eyes. Just a few minutes later, this 800-year-old Gate of Justice completely disappeared in front of everyone. Oh my god, he really disappeared, isn't the captain too strong? This is the Gate of Justice, and it was swallowed up by him. Way ha 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 ha, world government is having a headache now, you are worthy of being our captain. Woohoo, the gate of justice is gone, brothers, rush forward. Go, 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 naval headquarters. All the black group members were very excited. There is no doubt that Blackbeard's terrifying ability to swallow up the gate of justice with this move really adds a lot of confidence to everyone in the black group. Blackbeard looked at the empty scene in front of him, and the corner of his mouth couldn't help but curve. As the curve gradually expanded, his laughter also echoed in the sky. Thief ha 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 ha, world government, marine, are you ready? Guys, let's go, head to naval headquarters, there is no enemy ahead of us. We will go there without any rival. A group of black group members also roared excitedly. Wah wah wah, as the Ark's motto slowly rose into the sky and disappeared above the white clouds, the sea area became calm again. At the same time, one step behind the Blackbeard Pirates, the Whitebeard Pirates' six identical Moby Dicks are rapidly approaching the Gate of Justice in the sea. If Blackbeard were here, he would have discovered that the White Group had actually prepared six Moby Dicks this time. You must know that there were only four Moby Dicks in the previous Summit War. These are the changes brought about by his appearance. And just behind the Moby Dick, on the sea surface, a total of 43 large pirate groups are leading their respective pirate fleets toward the naval headquarters. At this time, the sound of constant communication was coming from the phone bug communication channel on their ship. Dad, they set out ahead of us. They said they wanted to solve the trouble ahead first. Is this the gate of justice? Nonsense. Apart from the gate of justice, is there anything else we need to solve first? It should be almost there now, right? But how to solve the gate of justice? I have no clue at all. Indeed, if the door of justice cannot be opened, we will not even be able to reach naval headquarters. That's the gate of justice that has stood for 800 years. It's really a bit troublesome. Just when the captains of these pirate groups were looking distressed, the contact number of the Moby Dick on their respective ships rang. Notice to all captains that the gate of justice in front of you has mysteriously disappeared. There is no trickery you can go straight through. Notice to all captains that the gate of justice ahead has mysteriously disappeared. There is no trickery and you can go straight through. Notice to all captains that the gate of justice in front of you has mysteriously disappeared. There is no trickery, you can go straight through. This series of news on the Moby Dick immediately made the captains of Whitebeard's pirate groups look confused. What the hell, the door of justice disappeared. How can it be? This thing has been standing for 800 years, how could it suddenly disappear today? Definitely not an accident. Apparently there were flying members of the White Regiment who flew over the Gate of Justice yesterday to check on the situation, but why did they disappear today? This seems to be news to the Whitebeard Pirates, but is it really that simple? What follows is a life and death battle that shocks the world. They all think it is possible that Marine and the world government will use any despicable means. However, even if conspiracy is used, the door to justice is destroyed. Isn't the cost too high? 
In this way, the captains of the Whitebeard Pirates passed by the original location of the Gate of Justice with an uneasy mood. The smooth ocean current almost made them forget that there once was a giant gate like an island in this sea area. Many Murloc crew members on pirate ships jumped into the water to check, and there were indeed traces of the Gate of Justice on the bottom of the sea. Moreover, depending on the situation, it may not take more than a few hours for the Gate of Justice to disappear. This made the captains of the pirate ships even more confused. Is the sudden disappearance of the Door of Justice a loss of morality or a distortion of human nature? No matter what, the 43 pirate groups under the Whitebeard Pirates and the Whitebeard main ship Moby Dick fleet have all passed through the Gate of Justice. Marineford is right around the corner. Naval Headquarters, Marineford. At this time, the square below was already filled with a group of Marine General level officers wearing righteous cloaks. They were densely packed, with as many as 100,000 people. These general level officers are all elite soldiers trained by Marine over the years. Behind these soldiers, eight giant vice admirals, more than 10 meters tall, stood holding various exaggerated huge weapons, which looked very oppressive. Behind these eight giant vice admirals, there are eight Marine veteran vice admirals. They are Flying Squirrel Vice Admiral, Ghost Spider Vice Admiral, Stowberry Vice Admiral. Fire Mountain Vice Admiral, Doberman Vice Admiral, Dalmatian Vice Admiral, Bastiu Vice Admiral, and Dual Swordsman Shimi. Waste. These eight Vice Admirals are all Grandmaster Marine Six Styles, two color hockey's top Marine Masters. These people standing at the rear immediately made countless Marine soldiers feel at ease. On the high platform behind these people, there are three high backed chairs. At this time, the three men in yellow, Red, and blue suits sitting on these three high back chairs are none other than the three marine admirals who are currently the most powerful marines, Kazaru, Akainu, and Aokiji. Behind and above the three admirals is the execution platform. If the Whitebeard pirates really want to rescue Fire Fist Ace, they must cross these three chasms. That's right, Marine Admiral, as the top combat power of the four emperors, is three natural chasms for the Whitebeard pirates. What's more, on top of these three chasms, there are Marine heroes Garp and Marine Marshal Sengoku who are also not weaker than them. Five of the world's top combat powers. Even if the four emperors are all here, I still don't dare to be careless when facing them. What's more, Whitebeard is the only one in the Whitebeard Pirates who has the power to compete with even one of them. Therefore, for Marine, the advantage in this battle lies with Marine. What's more, Marine also has 100,000 elite soldiers. Their numerical strength is twice that of the Whitebeard Pirates. All the Marine generals and officers were so confident that they didn't know how to lose. And on the execution platform, Sengoku was not as optimistic as the generals and officers below. He had a bad feeling in his heart. Especially as the first barrier to the Whitebeard Pirates, there has been no news yet. The execution live broadcast will start in a few minutes. Could it be that the Whitebeard Pirates can't even cross the Gate of Justice? Sengoku frowned, it shouldn't be like this. Garp, who was standing next to Ace, seemed to have noticed something. He turned to look at Sengoku and said in surprise. Sengoku, what is this? Brew brew brew. Just as Sengoku was about to speak, the phone in his hand rang. Click, Sengoku answered the phone immediately. But the next second, the voice coming from the words caused Sengoku, Garp, and the three admirals below them to suddenly change their expressions. Oops, Marshal Sengoku, the Gate of Justice. Dot the Gate of Justice is missing. Nani, hearing this, Sengoku, Garp, the three admirals, and Ace who was kneeling aside were all shocked. What did they just hear? After a few seconds of silence, Sengoku immediately yelled at the phone. You, if you haven't woken up yet, why don't you jump into the sea and wake up? No, Marshal Sengoku, I'm awake. The person on the other side of the phone swallowed his saliva and said with some horror. The door of justice has indeed disappeared. We are now rushing to the original location of the gate of justice to explore the reason. No matter what, Marshal Sengoku, this must be the fault of the Whitebeard pirates. They're probably coming soon. Get ready, Chaka. Hearing the other party hang up the phone, Sengoku's face sank into the water. This situation was definitely beyond his expectation. He has already made plans for the Gate of Justice. Even if the Whitebeard Pirates cannot open the Door of Justice, he will ask his subordinates to open it for them. 
After all, Marine had been preparing for this public execution for so long just to fight the summit war with Whitebeard. If the rightful owner is blocked from the door of justice, how can the Marine side carry out this drama? What Sengoku didn't expect was that the Whitebeard pirates could even make the Gate of Justice disappear. What a terrifying power this is. The Gate of Justice that has stood for 800 years has disappeared. Does this mean something? Three Admiral was also shocked. Garp's eyes were solemn. Sengoku looked far away. Boom. At this moment, a roar suddenly erupted from the sea at the port in the center of Marineford Square, followed by a splash of water hundreds of meters high. Wah wah wah. As the water splashed down, four-coated Moby Dick suddenly appeared in the port. And the man standing on the bow of the Moby Dick in the middle, holding a naginata, wearing a cloak, and wearing a signature white crescent beard, is clearly the man known as the strongest man in the world today, Whitebeard Edward Newgate. Hiss. Seeing this scene, although the Marines had already prepared for the Whitebeard pirates, they never expected that they would appear from under the water. You la 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 la. What followed was Whitebeard's heroic laughter that echoed in Marineford Square. Ace, are you okay? We're here to pick you up. Then, the captains of the major pirate groups who followed them shouted in the direction of the execution platform. Ace, we're coming too. Wait for us Ace. I'll rescue you right away. If you dare to touch the members of our Whitebeard pirates, we will still dare to break into the naval headquarters. Marine, just wait for me. Ace on the execution platform couldn't help but trembled when he saw this scene. Seeing hundreds of pirate ships appearing immediately behind the Moby Dick, Ace's eyes turned completely red. He said painfully, I'm sorry, Dad, it's my problem that makes everyone come here to fight. I. Stop talking nonsense. Whitebeard interrupted Ace directly. You la 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 la, you are my Whitebeard's son, even if it is a sea of swords and fire, Lousy will not give up on you. What father would blame his son for making a mistake? Wait for me Ace. Oh oh oh. Whitebeard's words immediately made everyone in the Whitebeard pirates roar excitedly. Their morale seemed to be stronger than that of the Marines in naval headquarters. Seeing this scene, Kazaru who was under the execution platform couldn't help but pout. The Whitebeard pirates are really scary. Can they still have such a turbulent momentum in the face of such a naval headquarters? Allah Allah, there is indeed some trouble. Aokiji scratched his head. Akainu was still contemplating. He looked at Whitebeard in the distance, and then looked up at Ace who was kneeling above him. He didn't know what he was thinking. On the execution platform, Sengoku's heart sank. He didn't expect these mere pirates to have such a high momentum. This is not okay. Thinking of this, Dang Guo immediately nodded in a certain direction, and then the live phone call was immediately activated. At this time, the scene of the confrontation between the Whitebeard Pirates and Marine in Marineford suddenly appeared on live broadcast screens around the world, or the TV some people were watching immediately changed to this scene. Many people who had been waiting for this scene suddenly showed interest after seeing the live broadcast. Ordinary people, on the other hand, are a little nervous looking at this scene. The collision between the pirate emperor and naval headquarters, who will win? Before the major live broadcasts, a bunch of reporters have been prepared in order to spread the news to other places at all times. Even though the pirate world has many large islands and a variety of black technologies for live streaming, as a world dominated by islands, there are still many places where people on the islands are very congested with information. Therefore, the information delivered by these reporters plays a key role. At this moment, Sengoku was holding a phone bug, but he did not open it. Instead, he looked at Garp aside and said. Listen Garp, I'm going to tell you all. Garp looked gloomy and said. As you wish. Sengoku glanced at Garp and then turned back to face the 100,000 marines below and the Whitebeard pirates in the distance. He wanted to use this opportunity to lower the morale of the Whitebeard pirates. Especially after seeing that the captains had arrived at Whitebeard's side, Sengoku had a cold look in his eyes. He looked forward and turned on the loudspeaker phone and said, Whitebeard, you're still here, but you shouldn't be. Because the identity of Fire Fist Ace will completely disappoint you, your Whitebeard pirates, and those pirates who trust you and follow you to fight regardless of their own safety. Whitebeard, this is the worst decision ever made. Stop joking, Sengoku, after my son was kidnapped, how could I, as a father, still ignore him? Whitebeard laughed and said, You la 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 la, Sengoku, 
if you have anything to sow discord, just say it. We, the Whitebeard Pirates, are not afraid of challenges. After Whitebeard finished speaking, the captains behind him also yelled enthusiastically, followed by the pirates behind him. Not afraid of challenges, not afraid of challenges, not afraid of challenges. For a time, the morale of the pirates increased a bit. Seeing this scene, Sengoku's heart suddenly skipped a beat. He subconsciously glanced at a kainu below, who nodded vaguely. Shen Guang fell on the captain named, Skuyard, standing next to Yuhu, holding a long knife. Seeing this, Sengoku sneered without any hesitation. Whitebeard, you better not just say nice things. Wait until Fire Fist Ace's identity is revealed, then don't blame me for not reminding you. Fire Fist Ace, you said it yourself, let me help you say it. Come and tell everyone, who is your father? Hearing this, Garp on the side was shaken, but Ace shouted calmly. My daddy is Whitebeard, you are lying, Sengoku shouted. Your name is Portgas D. Ace. Your mother's name is Portgas D. Rouge. And your father is the former pirate King Goldo Roger. Yi. After Sengoku said this, not only all the viewers watching the live broadcast and the pirates under the Whitebeard Pirates were shocked beyond measure, but even the marine soldiers on the Marine Marineford Square were all dumbfounded. This news is really exciting. Whitebeard's 2nd Division Captain, Fire Fist, Ace is actually the son of One Piece Roger. Real or fake, everyone, as soon as this idea came up, they were immediately rejected by themselves. Since Marshall Marine announced this news to the world at this time, it must be true. What's more, many ordinary people and ordinary Marine soldiers know that Marine captured the Pirate King Roger 20 years ago and executed him. Is it any wonder that Roger's son has been captured now? Many people who saw Roger's execution scene in Logue Town 20 years ago couldn't help but feel a little complicated when they saw Ace kneeling on the execution platform. Is this the cycle of fate? Sengoku's solemn voice continued. Do you think you hit it well? In fact, Whitebeard already knew it. Let the son of your former rival board your ship, in order to give full play to your qualifications and train you to become the next overlord of the sea. A-V-E-R-T-I-S-E-M-E-N-T. -E -E That's right, he's the next pirate king. Wrong, Ace roared angrily. I boarded Whitebeard's ship to make him the pirate king. I. Stupid, you are the only one who thinks so. Sengoku interrupted Ace again and shouted. In fact, the reason why we can't attack you at will is because of Whitebeard's protection. Otherwise, how do you think you can be safe until now? If you just ignore it, you will definitely develop your talents to become the next pirate. If the time comes, you will be allowed to inherit Whitebeard's position. Then, the next pirate king will be born again. How can we, Marine, allow evil to continue? Therefore, it is very necessary to execute you here today. For justice, even if there's a fight with Whitebeard, the strongest man in the world, I won't hesitate. Ace was immediately confused by Sengoku's confusion of right and wrong. In fact, not only Ace, but also the pirates under Whitebeard were all confused. They subconsciously turned to look at Whitebeard. Whitebeard, on the other hand, was still grinning, showing his white fang, and was not touched at all by Sengoku's words. Oh oh oh. As Sengoku finished his passionate speech, all the marine soldiers in Marineford Square roared with excitement. For justice, for justice, for justice. At this time, Marine, who was full of morale, immediately made the pirates on the pirate ship feel trembling. Many of them followed Whitebeard because they admired him. It's not because of Roger the Pirate King. Are those words true before? Why doesn't Dad speak? Just when countless pirates were worried, and Sengoku and Akainu sneered as if they were watching a show, Whitebeard's loud laughter rang out. Yula la la la, ha 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 ha. Following closely behind were the 14 captains under Whitebeard, as well as the 43 pirate ship captains under Whitebeard, who all laughed in unison. Seeing this scene, not to mention Sengoku and the others, even the pirates under the captain looked confused. At this moment, Skuard, who was standing behind Whitebeard, suddenly stood up and held a loudspeaker phone in his hand and mocked. I didn't expect that as Marshal of Marine, he would actually carry out such a conspiracy even though his military strength and geographical location are superior to ours. If it weren't for Dad's foresight, I'm afraid we would really have fallen for you. You actually tried to sow discord between me, Dad, and Ace. So what if he is Roger's son? 
Roger is dead a long time ago. Ace and our friendship were built by fighting side by side. What does Roger have to do with him? As a Marine Marshal, he still sows dissension. Shameful. At this time, Marco, the captain of the first team on the side, sneered. I didn't expect it Sengoku. Dad told us Ace's identity a long time ago. We came to save Ace not because he is Roger's son, but because he is our brother. If we weren't worried about being detected by your spies in advance, we would have announced Ace's identity long ago. Ha ha ha. After Marco finished speaking, the captains of the 43 pirate groups under Whitebeard laughed again. When their subordinates saw the captain's expression, they knew that they had received the news a long time ago. At this time, they finally understood Whitebeard's approach. After all, it's not as good as on the Moby Dick. There are still many talkative people among them. If Ace's identity is really leaked, how can it have such a miraculous effect? After witnessing the changes in expressions and morale of Whitebeard's pirates, as well as the astonished look on Marine's side, Whitebeard's lips curled up again. Teach, is this also part of your plan? Gulu la la la. Whitebeard looked at the ugly results on the execution platform in the distance and laughed. Sengoku, you didn't expect that your conspiracy would not work on my sons, did you? After so many years, you still like to play this game. Let Lousy see if your strength is as tough as your mouth. After saying this, Whitebeard opened his cloak with two thick arms, made fists with both hands and slammed into the air on both sides of him. Seaquake, bang, bang, click, click, click. As Whitebeard shouted, the space on the left and right side suddenly looked like smashed glass, with cracks forming in the void. Seeing this scene, Sengoku's pupils suddenly shrank. Boom boom boom. Before he could react, the entire sea around Marineford began to roll. If you were looking at the sky, you could see that the entire sea around Marineford had broken into several pieces, making Marineford start to shake. The sudden huge earthquake made the Marine soldiers on the square unsteady and staggering. However, it doesn't end there. Sizzle. The water in the cracked sea rose directly into the sky, turning into huge waves thousands of meters high and rolling down towards Marineford. The 100,000 Marine soldiers who saw this scene turned pale and horrified at this moment. Although they are the most elite soldiers in the Marines, they will still feel desperate when they see this unstoppable power of nature. How are they going to fight against this kind of monster? Compared to the Marine soldiers who were a little desperate at the moment, the four Shichibukai who had been recruited stood on one side with calm expressions. Among them, Da Flamingo even gloated. What a terrifying power. He is simply a monster. Is Marine really ready for a war with this guy? Hawkeye on one side frowned and glanced at Marine Admiral. When he saw that there was still no movement from the other party, he suddenly lowered his right hand. The pirate empress standing next to Hawkeye, Boa Hancock naturally saw this scene, she raised her eyebrows and said. Are you ready to take action too? Oh, Da Flamingo and Bartholomew Kuma on the side also looked over at the same time. Eagle Eye said calmly, if Marine doesn't take action, I will of course take action. I don't want to get all wet. Da Flamingo laughed when he heard this, foo 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 foo, it seems like something you would say, but Marine shouldn't be so miserable, right? On the execution platform, Sengoku also looked extremely ugly when he saw this. He did not expect that Whitebeard would start a fight without a word of agreement, which directly disrupted plan and caused Marine's morale to drop again. Especially since it was still being broadcast live at this time, Marine couldn't afford to be left behind. While ordering the other side to cut off the live broadcast signal, he shouted loudly. Aokiji, Aokiji, who was sitting on the far right under the execution platform, heard this and put away his lazy posture at this moment. Without saying a word, he soared into the sky and reached an altitude of several hundred meters. Immediately, Facing the thousand-meter waves rolling down from both sides, Aokiji did not panic at all. He opened his hands and shot an icicle at the thousand-meter waves on both sides. At the same time, wisps of cold air came out of his mouth. Ice Age. Phew, phew. When the two icicles shot from Aokiji's hand hit the thousands-meter high waves rolling in from both sides, the thousands-meter high waves rolling down the city were quickly frozen in the air in the blink of an eye. Minister. From below, it looks like there are two more icebergs on both sides of Marineford that look like a waxing moon. Oh oh oh, 
Seeing this, the marine soldiers below breathed a sigh of relief and shouted excitedly. Aokiji Admiral, it's Aokiji Admiral, ha ha ha, let me just say, we have three marines with the highest combat power here, so there is nothing to be afraid of. We marine are the strongest. Marine will win. Justice will win. Aokiji in the sky also felt the changes in the marine soldiers below, and immediately decided to pursue the victory and shouted in a deep voice. Whitebeard, your destructive power is too great. You must be dealt with first. Violent pheasant mouth. As Aokiji stopped drinking, his right hand was filled with cold air, and then a huge ice bird of tens of meters erupted from his right hand, aiming at Whitebeard on the Moby Dick and striking away. None of the captains of the Whitebeard pirates expected that Aokiji, a marine admiral, would be the first to take action. And as soon as he took action, he ran towards his father. But just because they didn't react doesn't mean Whitebeard didn't react. Gulu la la la. Whitebeard clenched his right hand into a fist, and a white circle of light appeared directly above his fist, and he just punched the space beside him. Boom. Click 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 click. There was another sound of space shattering. Bang. Then, the tens of meters long ice bird created by Aokiji exploded directly in the air. At the same time, Aokiji's body in the air was directly broken into two halves and fell on the marine wall below. A pile of ice cubes. Catskitskits. But soon, Aokiji's body stood up from the ice pile again. Standing B -bag, on the wall dozens of meters high, Aokiji looked at Whitebeard in the harbor in the distance and said with a smile. It seems that it is not so easy to succeed. But, Whitebeard, how do you break through this wall? Now, you haven't even reached the shore yet, so you have become a target. After Ryokiji finished speaking, Sengoku from behind immediately understood and shouted. Fire! Before they log in, just blow up their pirate ship. Don't give them any breathing space. Boom boom boom. Following Sengoku and Aokiji's simultaneous orders, the surrounding marines also reacted immediately. The cannon barrels behind the walls poked out and fired wildly at the Whitebeard pirates in the bay. Blackbeard couldn't help but frowned when he saw this scene from high in the sky. He remembered that the bay in his previous life was because Aokiji was blasted by Whitebeard and fell into the bay. This caused the ice to completely freeze, which instead gave the Whitebeard pirate group and marine an opportunity to fight head on. This situation is undoubtedly the biggest disadvantage of the Whitebeard Pirates. Putting aside the tall walls in front of the square, whether you can land ashore or not is one thing. Sure enough, as long as Marine Admiral didn't want to act, how could he have made such a big mistake? In the previous life, Aokiji seemed to have frozen the sea, leaving the Whitebeard Pirates with no way to retreat. In fact, it gave the Whitebeard Pirates a greater advantage. No matter why the harbor is not frozen in this life, Blackbeard is not worried. If Aokiji doesn't freeze, then he will. Just as everyone in the Whitebeard Pirates was resisting Marine's fierce artillery attack, a burst of arrogant laughter suddenly came from the sky. Thief ha 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 ha. Dad, you look a little embarrassed. I'm not late, brother Ace. Wah wah wah. Just as this crazy voice echoed over Marineford, the terrifying conqueror's hockey with purple-black lightning swept over along with the voice. Many marine soldiers who were manipulating cannonballs behind the wall were directly knocked unconscious by Blackbeard's conqueror's hockey, which was unscrupulous in martial arts. This caused the fierce artillery fire in the harbor to be interrupted. Immediately afterwards, everyone was stunned by the huge aerial ship shining with blue-gold light that was slowly falling from the sky. He he he. Boom boom boom. The Ark's proverbs did not give Marine a reaction. Dozens of huge blue electromagnetic cannons shot out from the Ark's proverbs. The blue electromagnetic cannons accurately hit the muzzle of each wall, directly blowing up the shell and the people inside it. Blackbeard, why are you here? Sengoku was stunned on the execution platform. No matter how much he calculated, he never expected that Blackbeard, who had defected from the Whitebeard pirates and was targeting the four emperors, would actually appear on the battlefield etc. What did he just say? In the Whitebeard Pirates, except for Marco and Whitebeard, everyone else looked just like Sengoku, looking astonished and confused. Didn't teach defect. What's going on now? Soon, Whitebeard gave them the answer. You la 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 la. Whitebeard laughed and said, teach, you came just in time. So far, all your plans have been realized perfectly. If it weren't for you, we might really have fallen into that Sengoku guy's trick. 
Ji Yu La La La. Wow. After Whitebeard's words fell, the entire Marine in Marineford Square and the pirates in the bay once again exclaimed. After hearing this, they still didn't understand that what Blackbeard said during that live broadcast half a month ago was probably for today's plan. Was it planned by Dad and that guy Teach? All the captains and pirate captains also smiled at this time. And what Marco said next also proved their conjecture. Have you guys arrived early? The gate of justice disappeared before we came. But why did you just show up now? Thief ha 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 ha. Blackbeard laughed and said, Heroes always appear at critical moments, Marco. Do you think my appearance has solved your trouble? Now let me pave a smooth path for my brothers. Hearing Blackbeard's words, everyone in the Whitebeard pirate group suddenly became extremely excited. Marco said with confusion, What are you going to do? Before Marco could finish speaking, Blackbeard in the sky showed a scene that shocked both him and Whitebeard. I saw Blackbeard, who was originally above the sky, surrounded by endless black energy. At this time, his three-meter-tall body had grown a little taller again, and his black hair had turned into snow-white color. At the same time, his pupils turned blue and white. Wow! Immediately afterwards, behind Blackbeard, a pair of blue-white ice soul wings suddenly spread out, scattering bits and pieces of ice fragments. And blue-white ice claws appeared on Blackbeard's hands and feet. A blue-white tiger tail suddenly poked out from behind him, swaying faintly in the floating black mist. Roar! As Blackbeard let out a shocking tiger roar, everyone watching finally recovered from the shock. Then the entire Marine Ford burst into even louder exclamations. Hey hey hey, what on earth is going on? Didn't Blackbeard rebel? Question mark quote. This guy must be acting with Whitebeard. The news that we captured Ace leaked. What happened? Are all those government agents just eating shit? Wait, shouldn't the most important thing to pay attention to is Blackbeard's ability? It was previously speculated that he is not a dark fruit person. Then what is his current state? Hey. This posture, looks clearly like zone, no, it should be the ability of the phantom beast species, right? Did this guy eat two devil fruit? Impossible, absolutely impossible. What's going on with this guy teach? Not only Marine was confused, but Whitebeard and Marco were also shocked. It's obvious that the abilities Blackbeard has shown now are not just Dark Fruit's abilities. Any expert would understand that the current state is definitely the manifestation of the ability of the Phantom Beast species. Only the Phantom Beast species can possess Zone's characteristics and unique abilities without changing its appearance too much. In other words, Blackbeard has at least two Devil Fruit abilities at this time. After seeing this scene, the people in the Black group behind the Ark were also dumbfounded. My captain has never shown this ability before. What's going on? Redfield on the side thought that the double fruit ability that Bartolomeo mentioned before was referring to Blackbeard's current situation, and immediately sighed and said. Teach's abilities are simply stronger than the last. Coupled with his own strength, I can't imagine how powerful he will be when he reaches his peak. What a monster. Bullet was also confused at this time. The dual abilities of Logia Dark Fruit plus Phantom Beast. Are you going to let people live like this? Just don't be too heaven-defying. Everyone in the black group looked at each other in confusion at this time. Suddenly Robin spoke. Didn't Vivi ask Belle to send a devil fruit before? Ah, could it be that one? Nami also remembered and suddenly spoke out. A. Hey, everyone in the black group was also confused at this time. But soon they also reacted. Our captain no longer has a double fruit ability, but a three fruit ability. Thinking of this, as members of the black group, they couldn't help but feel numb. How many trump cards does the captain have yet to reveal? At the same time, Wanokuni, Ghost Island, seeing Blackbeard in the form of a fantasy beast, Kaido, who was still teasing Whitebeard loudly about seeking death, was immediately stunned. He couldn't help but yelled. Quinn, please explain to me what's going on with this Blackbeard. Why can he eat two devil fruits? Quinn smiled bitterly when he heard this. Boss, if I knew why, I would eat two devil fruits too. There was shock in Jin's eyes, a Logia dark fruit, an unknown phantom beast species, how far will this guy grow? Tolan C. 10,000 kingdoms, in the Cake Island castle. Charlotte Lin Lin didn't even know the cake in her hand fell to the ground. Her old face showed the same look of disbelief, and Ji Yu Ku murmured. What a curse, there are people in this world who can eat two fruits. At this point, 
Her expression changed and she shouted. Katakori, let me investigate the situation. Haven't you fought with this guy before? Hearing this, Katakori also shook his head in disbelief and said. Mom, you may not believe it, but when I played against him a year ago, he didn't even eat devil fruit. Nani, Charlotte Linlin's exclamation spread throughout the Cake Island. New World, Elbaf Sea Area. The red hair pirates and several white haired giants sat in front of the screen and exclaimed after seeing this scene. Shanks, who was usually the noisiest, frowned and looked at the dual ability Blackbeard in the screen in silence. As Ben Beckman, who knows Shanks best, when he saw Shanks' expression, he knew that this guy probably knew something. In order to prevent Shanks from making a fuss and saying what he was thinking, Beckman patted him and said, Shanks, remember to pay attention to the occasion. When Shanks heard this, his body trembled, and he immediately showed that optimistic smile again. Back to Marineford, Blackbeard glanced at the shocked Whitebeard, but he did not speak immediately, but spit out an icy blue light directly towards the bay below. After the light hit the sea, the sea surface was frozen instantly. This effect is no worse than Iokiji's frozen fruit. At this point, everyone is awake and the world is in shock. Hiss. When they saw the sea turn into a blue continent in an instant, everyone on the entire battlefield could not help but gasp in astonishment. Many people also set their sights on Marine Admiral Aokiji on the wall. If Blackbeard hadn't spit out the icy blue light before, they would really have thought that Aokiji helped freeze the sea. While everyone was shocked and stunned, Blackbeard in the sky laughed and said, Thief ha 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 ha, Dad, I have paved the road for my brothers. It's up to you to solve those walls. At this time, Whitebeard also recovered from the shock, and then laughed heartily and said, You la 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 la, as expected of you, teach. This new ability is very good, it looks stronger than even Iokiji. In this case, I cannot be compared with you. Drink. Whitebeard raised his hands into fists while laughing. A white halo of light condensed on his fists and struck the air. Bang, bang, click, click, click. With two punches, the space shattered and the earth shook. Rumble. All the marines in Marineford began to shake as if they were on a rocking car. For a moment, people were on their backs. Boom, boom. At the same time, the city walls carefully built by marines shattered into pieces, revealing two gaps of several hundred meters on the left and right, as well as the figures of 50,000 elite marines in the inner square and Shichibukai standing on the high platform. Among the four Shichibukai, the pirate empress Boa Hancock was staring at Blackbeard in the sky with her beautiful eyes unblinking. She couldn't help but cover her mouth tightly with her hands, wearing a white and purple dress. Her curvy body in the high slit Chung Som leaned a little weakly on the giant python behind her. I didn't expect Master Teach to come too. It seems that I can't help naval headquarters anymore. With these thoughts in mind, Hanku, 497, Kehu's blue eyes flickered. The eagle eye on the side glanced at Hancock strangely, but he didn't say anything more, but slowly stepped forward. Seeing his move, Da Flamingo, Bartholomew Kuma, and Hancock, who was still in puberty, immediately turned to look at him. As the world's greatest swordsman, Mahawk is undoubtedly the strongest among the four of them. This is something that even an arrogant Da Flamingo would not dare to ridicule. Hey, hey, you're not going to take action so early, are you? Da Flamingo was surprised. Now that the gap has been opened, I also want to try to see what the strength of the world's strongest man is. While talking, Hawkeye pulled out the black knife Yi. The twelve skills of the supreme sharp sword. Looking at the gleaming black knife, Da Flamingo and the Empress on his side both showed solemn expressions. At this time, the terrifying sword intent on Hawkeye's body attracted even the Marine Admiral in the rear, as well as Sengoku and Garp on the execution platform to look over. Seeing Hawkeye holding a black knife, Kazaru raised his eyebrows and said. Oh, he was the one who made the first move. It's really strange. Buzz. As the sword intent on Hawkeye soared into the sky, the black sword in his hand was also drawn out with his sword. Woo hoo hoo hoo. The next moment, a shocking cyan sword energy spread across the square inside and outside Marineford for thousands of meters, and fell directly towards Whitebeard on the bow of Moby Dick. Is flat of the ultimate move of Mahawk. Standing in the sky, Blackbeard couldn't help but show interest in his eyes. Just with this sword, 
you can feel the gap between the swordsmanship of himself, a great swordsman, and Hawkeye, a great swordsman. But it doesn't matter. It's not like he majored in swordsmanship. Devil Fruit is the son of Virgin. The fruit is already invincible, why need to borrow sword skills? HMPH, how could I let you attack daddy? Standing behind Whitebeard, Captain Diamond Josie of the 4th Squadron snorted and jumped off the Moby Dick. At the same time, his body had turned into a bright diamond and he directly raised his hands to grab Hawkeye. That slash across several kilometers. Bangchi. The next moment, the cyan sword light collided with Josie Diamond's body, causing Josie to slide backwards for a distance on the ground, plowing a ravine. Ha! But after Joe's yelled, he slammed his hands upwards, which was proof that Hawkeye's terrifying slash was deflected into the air. The eagle eye on the wall of the inner square in the distance couldn't help but frowned when he saw this scene. Although he also felt that it was impossible for one move to be effective, he was a little surprised that his sword move was easily blocked. However, what Hawkeye didn't know was that Josie would not easily stop his sword moves. As a diamond man, when he saw the blood seeping out of his palms, his pupils could not help but shrink. He was the diamond man who ate the Paramisha shining fruit and armament hockey, how could he be cut open like this? The world's greatest swordsman truly deserves his reputation. When Kazaru from behind saw this scene, he couldn't help but marvel. The captains of the Whitebeard Pirates are really like monsters. That was a slash from the world's greatest swordsman. Was it so easy to follow? In this case, let me give it a try. Quote, sizzling. Kazaru's voice was still in place, and his figure had turned into a golden particle and rushed high into the sky. Seeing this scene, the marine soldiers below all looked extremely excited. Is Kazaru Admiral going to take action so soon? The pirates looked extremely solemn. No one dares to underestimate the strength of Marine Admiral Kazaru. But many people instead focused their attention on Blackbeard, who was surrounded by black mist and cold air, standing in the sky like a god in the sky. Most of them had watched the live broadcast half a month ago. The scene where Blackbeard seriously injured Kazaru is still vivid in my mind. Now that Kazaru takes action, will this man take action too? Many pirates are looking forward to it. When they first learned that Blackbeard had defected, they were angry as members of Whitebeard. But just now when they found out that Blackbeard was actually one of their own and had not rebelled against the Whitebeard pirates at all, these pirates were suddenly excited. You must know that Blackbeard is a ruthless person who can challenge Kazaru and hurt the opponent. 8 foot beautiful Magatama, underscore. While all the pirates were looking at Blackbeard expectantly, he remained unmoved, while Kazaru in the sky had already used his signature move. Looking at the dazzling golden Kazaru in the sky, all the pirates couldn't help but feel nervous. Marco below saw this and was about to rush forward. Marco, don't worry. At this moment, Blackbeard's voice appeared in his ears. Hearing this, Marco paused and turned his head in surprise to look at Blackbeard in the sky on the other side. Whitebeard was also surprised. Tisk. In the next moment, a blue arc of electricity fell from the sky. Then, that familiar yet unfamiliar face appeared in front of everyone. A man with two eye-catching long earlobes, a taiko drum on his back, a bare upper body, and a long golden stick in his hand. It's him, Thor Enel, that thunder fruit user. Sure enough, he is with Teach. Ha ha ha, everyone in the Whitebeard Pirates immediately recognized Enel's identity. Ha ha ha, didn't you expect that this god's reputation is so famous? Captain Teach, I was right to come down with you. Qinghai is really wonderful. After Enel laughed, lightning suddenly appeared around him, and the sound of thunder resounded throughout Marineford. 3000 Thunderbolts Chidori Ryu. Hearing the name of this move, the corner of Blackbeard's mouth twitched. Who asked you to combine the name of the move like this? Sizzle. As Enel finished speaking, thunder rolled like a thousand birds singing in unison. The thunder and lightning on the palm of his right hand turned into countless arcs and rose into the sky like a heavy rain. The last ones arrived first and directly drowned Kazaru in the sky. Boom boom boom. The next moment, golden lasers and blue thunder and lightning collided in the air, making bursts of cool explosions. The blue arc rain that originally covered Kazaru was also impacted by Kazaru's terrifying golden laser and began to fall towards Enel. Kazaru in the sky felt the intensity of Enel's attack and said in surprise. Tisk, Enel, 
have you actually become stronger again? It's really scary, it's only been 15 days. Enel looked at the 8-foot Magatama that was already close at hand. He twitched his face and said, Do not make jokes, I've become stronger and can't even break your attacks. Snort, in this case, let's try this trick. 300 million volts of electric discharge, Thunder God's spear. Snapped. After Enel finished speaking, he clapped his hands together suddenly, and then slowly opened the palms of his hands outward. Tisk. Then a 10-meter-long blue-black thunder spear was held in his hand. Immediately, under the gaze of naval headquarters and countless people watching the live broadcast, a ferocious smile appeared on the corner of Enel's mouth and he projected it towards Kazaru in the sky. Laugh. Almost instantly, everyone felt a flash of blue-black thunder, and a gap several meters wide was directly drawn between the blue thunder and the golden laser that were wrestling with the eight-foot Magatama in the sky. Kazaru, who was still looking surprised in the sky, was carried away by the blue-black lightning in the next moment towards the town behind Marineford. Boom! A few seconds later, there was a huge explosion directly in the rear town more than 10 kilometers away. The sky-high fire and violent earthquake made the entire Marineford tremble. Seeing this scene, the entire Marineford and everyone watching the live broadcast around the world were stunned. That's Marine Admiral Kazaru. Were you actually blown away by this guy? The battle has just begun. Marine Admiral was suppressed. Ha, ha, who? Enel in the sky was breathing heavily, and then he burst into laughter and said. Ha ha ha, Captain, how is the development of this move? Enel tilted his head proudly and looked at Blackbeard in the distance. Blackbeard's expression changed and he shouted. Enel, be careful. Enel's expression also changed at this time, but it was too late. Zilla, everyone saw a golden light flashing away, and the next moment a somewhat embarrassed Kazaru appeared above Enel's head. Speed is weight, have you ever been kicked by the speed of light? Zilla, boom, as the words echoed, Kazaru hit him with an upside-down golden hook. Then he kicked Enel out of the air, and a violent explosion suddenly erupted at the junction of the port and the frozen bay below. Click, click, click. The ice-covered sea surface and the port wharf suddenly shattered into countless fragments. The debris flew in a large crater with a diameter of dozens of meters appeared on the spot. Seeing this, everyone gasped again. I said in my heart that Marine Admiral is Marine Admiral. It is indeed not an easy solution. But if you look closely, you can feel that Kazaru's aura is also messed up. If it wasn't to prevent Marine's morale from falling, how could Kazaru rush back so desperately to give Enel a kick? After all, Enel's move just now made him feel very uncomfortable. Just when everyone thought Enel was seriously injured, in the next moment, amidst the explosion of fire below, a blue lightning that was 100 meters long soared into the sky from the smoke and dust and directly hit the sky. Kazaru, who was on top, blocked the middle and cut him off. Let it fall from the air and hit the ground, causing an explosion. 3000 Thunderbolts, Chidori's Sharp Spear. He he he. Immediately afterwards, Enel's voice rang out from the explosion of fire, and with the lightning flashing into the sky, the fire and smoke were directly washed away, revealing the man who was raising his hand in the pit. Enel wiping blood from the corner of his mouth. As expected of Marine Admiral, this kick really hurts. Zi Le Yi. On the distant wall, Kazaru turned into light particles and rose into the sky again to directly scatter the smoke and dust of the laser explosion. He shouted. Don't be ridiculous, it has no effect at all, okay. Is this the strongest Logia's thunder fruit? It's really scary. All marines, pirates, people around the world watching the live broadcast. I'm coming, right, this is Kazaru. No wonder they always felt like something was missing just now. It turned out to be this taste. Kazaru, who was so decisive and fierce before, doesn't look like Kazaru anymore. But I have to say that seeing the battle between two top Logia ability users is simply a feast for the eyes. But is a monster like Enel just the deputy captain? How strong is this Blackbeard pirate group? Thinking of this, the senior marine officials looked up solemnly at the members on the big ship in the distant sky. At this moment, Whitebeard, standing on the Moby Dick, laughed and said. Teach, your partner is really skilled. It's already amazing to be able to play against Kazaru without being at a significant disadvantage. Next is the time for our decisive battle. North time, J is when we decide the winner. 
Kids, Teach has paved the way for us. Now it's our turn. Overturn Naval Headquarters and Rescue Ace. After Whitebeard finished speaking, he pointed the Naganata in front of him and shouted. Oh oh oh. The 50,000 pirates and their captains behind them roared and jumped off the pirate ship one by one, and rushed towards Marineford Square in front. Sengoku on the execution platform also held a loudspeaker and shouted. Soldiers, charge me. Justice will prevail. Following Sengoku's roar, the 50,000 marines in the front square and the 50,000 marines in the inner square also began to roar and kill the surging pirates one after another. A bloody war begins. Everyone watching the live broadcast from all over the world also restrained their cheerful expressions when watching the two top ability users fight before, and instead looked solemnly at the battlefield where death and blood bloomed. Enel flashed and turned into lightning and came to Blackbeard's side. He ignored the fierce fighting below, but raised his hand and poked the ice tiger claw on the back of Blackbeard's hand and said. Captain, is this your second ability? It looks like zone. No, this is my third ability, zone cat fruit phantom beast species frostwing white tiger form. Now that his ability has been revealed, Blackbeard did not hide his intention from Enel and told him directly. Nani, Enel was immediately stunned. Isn't that the promised double fruit ability? Blackbeard grinned at him and said. You have to learn to get used to it. Okay, let's not talk about this for now. Let me give the marines a surprise first. Quote. After saying this, Blackbeard flapped his wings and rose into the sky with some white frost and black mist. His actions here immediately aroused the idea of marines' high-end combat power. After seeing this scene, Akainu, who was about to take action, suddenly paused and aimed his fist at Blackbeard in the sky. Blackbeard didn't care at all when he saw this. Arriving at an altitude of several hundred meters, the black mist around him surged up like boiling water, and they slapped each other together and shouted. Tengai Shinsei. Back to a few seconds ago, Marco, who was standing on the bow of the Moby Dick, couldn't help but smile and said after seeing Blackbeard rising into the sky. Teach, what do you want to do? Um, no, Akainu actually wants to attack Teach. Dad. I'm going to stop Akainu first, don't let that guy disturb Teach. Quote. Yeah, okay. Whitebeard nodded, he was also curious about what this Teach wanted to do. Wow, the next second, blue flames lit up all over Marco and soared into the sky. Under the execution platform, Akainu, who was originally preparing to attack the pirates, suddenly changed his target and aimed his raised fist at Blackbeard who was rising into the sky. Tengai Shinsei. Dark Hound. Almost at the same time, Blackbeard's shouts sounded in the sky, and Akainu also took action at the same time. Then Akainu's right arm turned into a huge magma fist and blasted towards Blackbeard in the sky. But Blackbeard in the sky still stood with wings spread, surrounded by darkness and cold air, his hands and palms together, his white eyes looking down indifferently at Akainu below, with no intention of avoiding Akainu's sudden attack. Just when the huge fist of magma rising into the sky was about to touch Blackbeard in the sky, ten cyan electric figures suddenly appeared in Blackbeard's front city. Meters away. Teach, you are really messing around. Marco tilted his head and smiled, and then the high-level armament hockey was instantly wrapped around his body. He kicked the giant magma fist that came up with a black and blue kick, and shouted at the same time. Phoenix Seal. Boom. Two terrifying attacks collided in the sky, and a wave of air exploded. Akainu's punch was shattered by Marco's kick, and quickly turned into magma rocks and fell from the sky. Boom boom boom. Several fire pits of more than 10 meters in size were suddenly smashed into the inner square below the execution platform. This is also thanks to the fact that the marine in the inner square has already charged forward, otherwise many people would be killed at this moment. Phoenix Marco. Another pirate. Akainu was also unmoved, staring at Marco above and saying with murderous intent. Above the sky. Seeing this, Blackbeard solemnly said. Marco, your physical strength should be used to rescue brothers in need. We can't let the brothers who fought for dad die because of their injuries, and we can't let them feel cold. Leave the fighting to me. Quote. After hearing this, Marco stared at Blackbeard for a while, then a smile broke out on his face and he said. Okay. Then I'll leave it to you. I'll use my abilities to help the brothers. Well, go ahead. Blackbeard nodded, then looked down at Sengoku, Garp, and Dog on the execution platform and grinned. Sengoku, Garp, 
Red Dog, are you ready? If you dare to catch my Blackbeard brother, you will have to pay the price. Thief ha 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 ha. Blackbeard's laughter echoed in the sky, which made many people subconsciously look up at the god-like man in the sky. Just when they raised their heads, everyone's faces suddenly turned pale. The originally clear sky seemed to be suddenly shrouded in dark clouds, making the sky dark. But when everyone looked up, they immediately understood what kind of dark cloud it was. It is clearly a huge meteorite equivalent to half a marine fort. Wow! After seeing the meteorite falling from the sky that could smash even Marineford into pieces, the expressions of both Marine and the ten powerful people watching the live broadcast changed drastically. Hey, hey, stop joking. How can a person do this kind of thing? Blackbeard, that fool, does he want to sink Marineford? Does this guy teach want to kill us as well? Well, wait, the target is the execution platform and the other half of Marineford. That's fine. Asshole teach. Pay attention to Ace's safety. It's over, how are we going to fight against this monster? Admiral, can we really stop this meteorite? Even if we do, we will be crushed to death by the rubble, right? Many marines who were between the inner square and the outer square had not had time to rush to the ice of the harbor to fight the pirates because there were only two exits. At this time, they were stuck here. If the meteorite fell or shattered, they would definitely suffer heavy losses. Sengoku said angrily on the execution platform. Blackbeard, you. Akainu below said indifferently. Isn't it just a meteorite? I'll deal with it. Don't be stupid Akainu. Garp shouted. Even if you can break it, it won't be our marine who suffers in the end. After hearing this, Akainu glanced at the tens of thousands of marines crowded into the inner square and fell silent. Garp took a deep breath and said. Let me do it, Sengoku, you assist me. If there are scattered rocks falling, you can directly use the shock wave to blast them into powder. Is that okay? Who are you looking down on, Garp? Sengoku said angrily. Ha 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 ha. Garp laughed loudly, jumped up directly, stepped out several air blasts in the air, and then increased his speed again, directly reaching an altitude of several hundred meters. When the marine soldiers below saw Garp rising into the sky, they suddenly felt an inexplicable sense of security as Vice Admiral Garp taking action. Ha ha ha, it's done. No problem now. Vice Admiral Garp can definitely solve it. A group of Marine soldiers cheered excitedly. And Garp didn't disappoint. I saw Garp rising into the sky. At this time, his figure made a movement similar to drawing a bow to charge up power. Looking at the huge meteorite equivalent to half a Marine fort, hockey surged around him, and violent black and red lightning wrapped around his fist. Under the gaze of hundreds of thousands of people below in the whole world, he punched the meteorite falling from the sky. This scene looks as small and powerless as Mayfly shaking a tree. Galaxy Impact But as Garp's roar echoed through the sky, the meteorite half the size of Marineford disintegrated directly in the sky with a, boom, turning into countless fine dust and dissipating from the middle. There are also quite a few huge rocks falling downwards in the outer circle. In fact, the impact is not big, and they cannot hurt the marine soldiers below at all. Wow, seeing this scene, countless marine soldiers shouted excitedly, and ordinary people watching the live broadcast around the world also breathed a sigh of relief, and then cheered excitedly. Seeing this, Blackbeard in the sky not only showed no surprise, but instead let out a wild laugh again. Marine hero Garp, right. Can you blow up the first one or the second one? Blow up the second one. Can you beat the third one? Thief ha 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 ha. Garp, who was originally looking at the smiling marine soldiers below, couldn't help but freeze his smile when he heard this voice. Subconsciously looking up, two meteorites of the same size fell from the sky again, bearing a fiery red color and heading toward the naval headquarters with pressure. Because of these two huge meteorites, the clouds in the sky above naval headquarters were shaken away. Gudong gudong gudong. After seeing this scene, Everyone in the square below and all over the world watching the live broadcast swallowed their saliva in horror, their faces full of fear. Leave one piece to me. But I can't completely blow it up like Mr. Garp. The rest is up to you, Mr. Sengoku. At this moment, under Marine Admiral's chair, a figure rose into the sky, and at the same time, the voice of the visitor slowly sounded. Everyone looked up and immediately recognized this person. The world's greatest swordsman, Mahawk. 
The next second, the soaring eagle eye slashed out with a sword, and the green sword light soared into the sky. It crossed meters and instantly cut the piece of meteorite cloth that fell first into countless small quartz stones that were almost one or two meters square. Compared to this meteorite, which is half the size of Marineford, it is indeed very small. But if they were smashed down, they would still cause considerable casualties. But even so, it's shocking enough. Is it as good as Vice Admiral Garp? He is worthy of being the greatest swordsman in the world. Ha ha ha, thank you very much. It gave me a chance to breathe. Garp laughed out loud when he saw this, took a breath, and said helplessly. You are still old after all. Sengoku, who was on the execution platform below, also rose into the sky at this time, turning into a golden giant Buddha dozens of meters high in the air. I saw him stretching his right palm forward, pointing at the meteorites cut into countless pieces by the eagle eye in the sky, and shouted. Buddha's impact. Immediately, a shock wave visible to the naked eye surged out from Sengoku's golden palm, directly blasting all the falling meteorites in the sky into powder. Oh oh oh. Marine below immediately cheered after seeing this. Galaxy impact. After Garp accumulated strength, he once again integrated Conqueror's hockey into one punch. Conquerors wrapped around his right arm and slammed into the third huge falling meteorite. Boom. The meteorites exploded again, but this punch was not as good as the first one. Many meteorites turned into huge rocks and fell down. Buddha's impact. Sengoku also added another palm. Seeing that everyone's attention was now focused on Sengoku, Garp and Hawkeye, Blackbeard was already quickly approaching the execution platform. But he also knew that it was impossible to avoid everyone's attention. After all, he is like a handsome boy in the dark, shining brilliantly. Whatever you do will attract everyone's attention. But now that three admirals are being restrained by him, this is the best opportunity he has created. When he was only 200 meters away from the execution platform, he knew that this was the best distance he could get. No matter how close you get, it's too late. Therefore, even if the distance is far away, Blackbeard can only take action forcefully. Because this is their best chance to save Ace. As for the act of acting like a fool like Tomo Sengoku in the original novel, it is impossible to do it. After gritting his teeth, Blackbeard raised his hand, shook it violently at Ace in the distance and shouted. Universal pull. Buzz. Then, amid a burst of exclamations, Ace's figure on the execution platform flew directly into the air and flew in the direction of Blackbeard. Nani. No. Stop fire fist Ace. After seeing this scene, Sengoku, who had just returned to his human form in the sky, suddenly changed his expression and exclaimed in surprise. This scene immediately attracted the attention of countless marines below. Even the sea. The thieves were also surprised to see Ace flying towards Blackbeard in the sky. Seeing that Ace was about to be taken away by Blackbeard, Whitebeard on the Moby Dick in the distance saw this scene, his eyes suddenly lit up and he laughed. Gee you la 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 la, it's worthy of you, teach, well done. Well done teach. Marco, who was using his abilities to heal other injured people, also shouted excitedly. The morale of the pirates was greatly boosted. But at this moment, a thick smoke rose into the sky. Just when Ace was about to fly through the thick smoke, a Kainu's voice sounded like a devil from hell. Snort. Blackbeard, I've been watching you for a long time, I can't even hope to succeed. Since there is no way to formally execute him, it would be the same for me. Die, you who have sinful veins. Canine-toothed red lotus. In the thick smoke, a Kainu's figure suddenly appeared. His right arm turned into a hell dog formed from magma, and his punch penetrated Ace's back without hesitation and penetrated from his abdomen. The joy on Ace's face completely froze. At this moment, it was as if time had frozen. Garp in the sky, Sengoku with a solemn face, Blackbeard with a stunned face, and Whitebeard and others on the Moby Dick in the distance with frozen smiles. Even the marines and pirates who were fighting below were stunned. No matter what, I never expected that Ace would be killed like this. Obviously Teach is almost successful. Ace. In the distance, Whitebeard's cry of grief came from the Moby Dick. Ace. Following closely behind were the captains of division and the pirates who were close friends with Ace. Ha 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 ha. A Kainu in the sky looked at Ace who had his back pierced, and he couldn't help but laugh excitedly. Blackbeard, who was a hundred meters away from him, was frowning and expressionless. 
he sighed softly in his heart, knowing that it was not that simple. This world line thing is really outrageous. However, if he can't save Ace, can't he inherit Ace's abilities? Brother Ace, my brothers, my beloved relatives and friends, you can go with peace of mind. Brother, I will make good use of your abilities. Mara Mara fruit was not developed like this. Universal pull. Blackbeard reached out and grasped the air again, and Ace, whose back was pierced, escaped from Akainu's hand and then slowly fell into Blackbeard's arms. Akainu in the rear also knew that Ace would die, so he had no intention of pursuing him. Instead, he laughed and said, Ha 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 ha, Blackbeard, aren't you crazy? You resurrected him. Fire Fist Ace, how can you save such a sinful bloodline? Why do you think I haven't taken action to deal with that meteorite? Ha ha ha, ah, Akainu, who was still laughing wildly, suddenly felt a darkness above his head. The next moment, Whitebeard, carrying infinite rage, appeared in the sky above Akainu at some point. Before anyone could react, Whitebeard held the huge Naginata in his hand. With a white halo, he slashed hard on Akainu's chest. Boom, poof, click 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 click. The next moment, the space shattered and Akainu spurted blood. Rumble. The entire marine ford collapsed at this moment, extending from the direction of the port to the other side of the island. Naval headquarters, marine ford was shattered into two pieces as countless people around the world watched. Call out. Boom and Akainu's body was slashed from a high altitude with blood splattering everywhere, and was directly smashed into a deep valley that was split in two. He didn't know whether he was alive or dead. Yi, this series of sudden changes caused everyone's complexion to change suddenly. Blackbeard ignored those and shouted. Gardino. Crunch. As Blackbeard roared, Mr. Three immediately poked his head out of the space door next to Blackbeard. Without Blackbeard's instructions, he immediately understood what he wanted to do. Raising his hand, it turned into white wax and sank into the seastone handcuffs behind Ace. In less than a second, the seastone handcuffs opened with a click. Ace, elementalize, cough cough cough. Ace, who kept coughing up blood in Blackbeard's arms, smiled helplessly. Teach, it's useless. Anyway, thank you for your kindness, I, Ace, can only repay it in the next life, ahem. Please help me say, thank you, to my father and brothers. Fire Fist Ace has come to an end. Buzz. Above the sky, a shocking surge of darkness formed a black ball with a diameter of a hundred meters in the sky. In the dark space, in the door space beside Blackbeard, Moria has been waiting there. After a golden ball was pulled out of Ace's body, Blackbeard immediately said. Moria, cut Ace's shadow. Yes, la. Without any hesitation. Moria cut off Ace's shadow, then swallowed it into his belly and stored it. After taking a look at the huge circular hole in Ace's belly, he handed Ace over to Moria without hesitation and said. Send it back and give it to Poison Q, let him finish repairing Ace's body, and then let Brook's ghost energy freeze his body. I see. After Moria left, Blackbeard did not hesitate and opened his mouth directly. The purple halo in his mouth swallowed the beating golden flame in his hand. Ding. God Eater Sad Face 2 halves. Zone Cat Fruit Phantom Beast Species Frostwing White Tiger Form. Logia Mara Mara Fruit. After feeling the feedback from Munch Munch Fruit, wisps of golden flame suddenly rose in Blackbeard's white pupils. Mara Mara Fruit, got it. Blackbeard thought, and his consciousness immediately entered the space of Traveler's Clock. In this space, in addition to Blackbeard's unconscious soul that was shattered before, there is another conscious soul that is imprisoned. For this soul, Blackbeard had no intention of awakening it at the moment, but looked up at the huge silver white clock. At this time, a scale on the silver white clock has just accumulated layers. Blackbeard smiled. Does it seem like luck is on my side too? Just in time, let Akainu feel the shock brought by Mara Mara fruit. Awaken. After Blackbeard drank deeply, the three scales that had just been accumulated above the traveler's clock disappeared, turning into silver light and enveloped Teach's soul. Buzz. Immediately, under the control of his thoughts, Mara Mara Fruit's ability directly entered the awakening stage. The originally golden flame instantly turned into a silver color. At this time, Blackbeard, who was in the dark space constructed by Dark Fruit, did not know that the movement he brought had once again shocked the entire battlefield. Go back a few minutes. Seeing and feeling Ace's aura completely disappearing, 
Whitebeard directly entered the stage of rampage. After driving a kainu into the abyss, he still didn't want to let a kainu go. After a wave of air burst out of his body in the air, Whitebeard actually rushed down below where a kainu fell, and at the same time roared angrily. Lava imp, die to me, drink. After arriving at the gap, Whitebeard raised his right arm, his fist flashed with white light and punched the gap hard. Boom, click, click, click. The next second, the space shattered, the entire marine ford trembled again, and a larger hole opened in the ground, directly splitting the inner and outer squares of marine ford into two halves. The water below the rift surged again. Ice Age. Aokiji, who was stronger in the distance, used his ability again and instantly froze the seawater gushing up from the crack. If he hadn't frozen in time, I'm afraid the entire marine ford would really fall apart. But even so, he couldn't hold on for long. A week later, Marine Ford was still bound to fall apart and sink to the bottom of the sea. Aokiji brat. There were two white threads floating in Whitebeard's eyes, and he punched directly in Aokiji's direction. Boom. Click, click, click. Aokiji's body, which had just used up its power, exploded in the air with a bang, turning into countless ice shards and falling to the ground. Aokiji. Sengoku in the sky roared in horror. Everyone, be careful, the strongest man in the world has gone berserk. Let us trap him, and Marine will not retreat until he dies. Fire Fist Ace is dead. The sins of One Piece have been completely wiped out by us. Destroy the pirates and justice will prevail. Sengoku's words were undoubtedly a shot in the arm for Marine, who was retreating steadily after being frightened by Whitebeard's terrifying anger. Countless Marines also yelled. Destroy the pirates and justice will prevail. Destroy the pirates and justice will prevail. Destroy the pirates and justice will prevail. Whitebeard didn't pay any attention to Sengoku, he just wanted to kill a kainu now. Seeing that a kainu still had a chance to survive, he jumped directly into the crack below and shouted. Magma kid, die to lousy. While roaring, Whitebeard raised his hand with white vibrating power and was about to hit the abyss below again. Tisk. But at this moment, a golden laser beam the size of a fist instantly penetrated the ice and rose into the sky, directly piercing Whitebeard's abdomen and causing the shock power of Whitebeard's move to disappear suddenly. Cough. Whitebeard bit the blood that reached his mouth, swallowed it forcefully, then glared and roared. Kazaru kid, are you actually doing this despicable sneak attack? Wow, dad, let's go up first and then talk. At this moment, Marco had already felt that he came directly to Whitebeard's side, raised his arm to the sky, and the green flames instantly covered Zongbeard's injury, temporarily suppressing the injury. Zilla. In the crack below, the golden light fell in another direction. After the golden light dissipated, Kazaru supported Akainu, who had a bloody stab wound on his chest, and stood on the city wall. Call. After Kazaru took a deep breath, he wiped the cold sweat from his forehead and pouted. It's so scary. It was almost too late. Cough, cough, cough. A kainu coughed up a burst of blood and said with a smile. Thanks, Porosalino. Hey, please forgive me and don't be so careless next time. Kazaru shook his head helplessly. At this moment, Sengoku's angry roar sounded from the sky. Whitebeard, don't act like I don't exist. Everyone looked up subconsciously. Then they saw that Sengoku in the sky had once again transformed into a golden giant Buddha dozens of meters high. The big palm was aimed at Marco, who had just been led by the beard to fly to the city. Buddha's impact, not good. Whitebeard immediately sensed the danger when he saw the color. He threw Marco away with one hand, and held the shaking force wrapped in black lightning with the other hand and rushed forward without retreating. Boom, two terrifying forces collided in the sky. Click click click. Above is a powerful and oppressive impact, below is a shattered space, and all around are black lightning dancing wildly in the air. The sky split into two. On the square, countless marines and pirates saw this scene and fell into a state of horror and aphasia. After holding on for a few seconds, Sengoku's golden giant Buddha flipped backwards and crushed half of the naval headquarters office building with a, boom. Whoops, boom, on Whitebeard's side. His body flew backwards and directly hit the square behind, creating a large crater dozens of meters away. Everyone watching the live broadcast from all over the world was horrified when they saw Whitebeard unleashing Kamui and fighting against the four admiral-level beings of Marine within a few minutes. 
I originally thought he was just an old man who was about to die, but I didn't expect that he could still exert such power. Wanokuni. Ghost Island. After Kaido saw this scene, his drinking hand stopped, his eyes were filled with incredible shock, and then he laughed and said. Waluoluoluo, Jin, it's a good thing you persuaded me in the first place. Isn't it just a devil fruit? If we had faced off against this old immortal, we beasts pirates would have turned into skin. I didn't expect that this old immortal would still have such terrifying fighting power at this age. He was indeed the person that Rox relied on the most back then. Quote. Jin, Quinn, Kaido, and the six flying compatriots below all had cold sweat breaking out on their foreheads. They had underestimated the Whitebeard pirates before, but now that they saw it, they suddenly felt scared. At the same time, a burst of laughter came from a phone with long eyelashes on Kaido's right. The horse scolded the horse. My mother was also persuaded by Katakori at that time. Although an unknown devil fruit was lost, it didn't matter, it was just a devil fruit. But even if this old guy Whitebeard can fight again, he can't escape this time. With five marine admiral levels of strength, the Whitebeard pirates are destined to be destroyed, Kaido. The horse scolds the horse. El Baf Sea Area, the residence of the red-haired Shanks pirates. Unlike the noisy beasts pirates and big mom pirates, the red hair pirates fell into silence. Shanks let out a long sigh, smiled bitterly for a while, and then yelled angrily. That garb, it was so hard for him to hide it from me. Beckman on the other side smashed his wine glass, turned around and yelled at a member of the red hair pirates. Jerris, why are you still standing there? Ready to use that ability, we set sail immediately for naval headquarters. Is there anything more important than appeasing the captain's anger? Yes, Vice Captain. Jerry's also yelled. The other members of the Red Hair Pirates all smashed the wine glasses in their hands to the ground, and everyone quickly boarded the Red Force under the stunned eyes of the surrounding giants. Upon seeing this, Shanks smiled on his tear-filled face. Sorry, guys, I'm being willful again. Beckman, who was already standing on the bow of the boat, spit out the toothpick in his mouth and grinned. It's just having a captain like you that gives me a headache, but it's precisely because you are like this that you are worthy of our following. Ha 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 ha, underscore. Shanks laughed heartily and appeared on the ship in a blink of an eye. Later, the Japanese soldiers shouted. Jerris, target naval headquarters, Marineford, go. At the same time, Marineford, just when Whitebeard and Sengoku both fell to the ground, a silver-white flame suddenly shot into the sky, making everyone in Marineford feel a hint of heat in the air. What's the situation? That place is where Blackbeard disappeared before. What did that guy do again? Everyone, be careful. Just as all the Marines were on alert, the dark ball in the sky slowly melted. Immediately afterwards, Blackbeard's figure appeared in front of everyone again. At this time, Half of the black mist surged up behind Blackbeard, and half of the silver-white flames burned and distorted the space with terrifying high temperatures. The black ice-colored cold air in his left hand surged, and the silver-white flames in his right hand danced. The blue-white tiger tail behind him flicked gently, sometimes bringing up black mist, sometimes bringing up white flames. One black and one white, it gives people an extremely eye-catching and eye-catching feeling, like a god who dominates the world. After he appeared on the battlefield in this posture, the entire Marineford could not help but fall into silence. The next moment, before everyone could react, Blackbeard in the sky locked his eyes directly on a kainu on the city wall, and he shook his right hand fiercely with a trace of golden flames. Rising from the sky, in this golden flame, you can still vaguely see a hint of silvery white. Immediately, under everyone's unbelievable gaze, Blackbeard punched a kainu on the distant city wall, and at the same time, his shouting voice echoed in the sky. Fire punch. Boom. The next moment, a giant golden flaming fist with a diameter of dozens of meters hit a kainu from the sky. What? Seeing this scene, everyone was dumbfounded. A kainu quickly came back to his senses. He stared at Blackbeard in the sky and sneered. Madness. My lava lava fruit is a superior fruit that has been burned. Even a mere flame emits brilliance. Exclamation mark exclamation mark exclamation mark quote. Akainu also did not give in and punch the huge flaming fist falling from the sky. The next second, the huge golden flame fist and the huge magma fist collided in the sky. Boom. Suddenly the magma exploded and flames flew everywhere. 
They are evenly matched. How can it be? A question slowly emerged in everyone's mind. Isn't lava lava fruit a superior fruit? It should have a restraining effect. Wasn't it because Thunderfruit restrained Kazaru before that he seemed extremely passive? You know, Kazaru's laser just penetrated even Whitebeard. But he was still embarrassed by Enel. But what's going on now? At the same time, Akainu's exclamation also sounded. He looked at the burnt black and red skin on his right arm and couldn't help but said in disbelief. Aha, burn, how can it be? Obviously my lava lava fruit is the high level ability. Blackbeard looked at the incredulous Akainu below and spoke calmly. If you believe it, just wait and God will tell you the truth. Akainu was so stimulated by Blackbeard's words that his face turned red and he yelled angrily. Although I don't know how you stole the power of Ace's Mara Mara fruit, I don't believe you can still have the ability of the third fruit. Die, great eruption. Akainu's hands turned into lava, and he aimed at Blackbeard in the sky and blasted out more than a dozen huge magma fists with a diameter of 5 to 6 meters, as if he wanted to use this move to completely blow up Blackbeard. Ignorant and miserable people who only exist in their own self-awareness. Blackbeard calmly shook his head. After snapping his fingers, nine golden fire dragons more than 10 meters long appeared behind him. Then he looked down at Blackbeard below and said, I'm going to tell you right now, not only have I mastered the three powers of devil fruit, but I will also let you understand that Mara Mara fruit never has the ability to ascend. Burn everything, Kowloon Flame Song. As Blackbeard raised his hand and waved forward, the nine golden flame dragons behind him roared and swooped down from the sky. Ang ang ang. The sound of violent dragon roars echoed across the sky. Boom boom boom. The next second, the nine golden fire dragons collided with the great eruption sprayed by Akainu one after another, and then sent out huge explosions in the sky. Soon, a scene that shocked everyone appeared. After the huge magma fists collided with the fire dragon, they melted directly and turned into red hot magma dripping down from the air. It wasn't until each fire dragon's energy was exhausted that it exploded, melting several other huge magma fists. Lava lava fruit was actually suppressed. If Akainu observes carefully, he can find that there is a silver-white flame in the bodies of these nine golden fire dragons. Unfortunately, Akainu's mood at this time has been replaced by shock. Soon, from the explosion smoke in the sky, three intact golden fire dragons suddenly rushed towards Akainu. Akainu's reaction was not slow and he immediately turned into lava to resist. But Blackbeard didn't give him this chance. When the fire dragon approached Akainu, he said indifferently, Feel the pain Sakazuki. Explosion. Boom. The next moment, Akainu was directly engulfed by golden flames. Marineford, above the city wall, golden flames rose into the sky along with thick smoke. Hundreds of meters of surrounding city walls were instantly engulfed in flames and melted into patches of scarlet magma. Akainu's body had disappeared. Yi. After seeing this scene, the entire Marineford square once again burst into uproar. However, Blackbeard in the sky had no intention of stopping. He opened his mouth, and ice blue energy gathered in his mouth. Freezing ray. Tisk. The next moment, an extremely cold light fell from the sky and struck a piece of magma below. Tisk tisk tisk. Kakaka. Immediately, the liquid magma quickly turned into pieces of icy blue ice sculptures. Everyone looked subconsciously, but still did not see a kainu. Call out. Blackbeard didn't even hesitate and swooped down from the sky. At the same time, his voice echoed in the sky. The Blackbeard pirates, start an all-out war and defeat Marine. Kill me. There is no enemy ahead of us. Sengoku in the distance saw this scene and immediately roared. Blackbeard, where do you think this is? Defeat Marine. Do not make jokes. Sakazuki, Kazaru, Aokiji, stop pretending to be dead for lousy, go kill Blackbeard for me. Garp, what are you doing? Do you want to see naval headquarters destroyed? Sengoku's roar finally brought Garp, who had been in a state of unconsciousness, back to his senses. Then, he took a quick look and realized that Marine was at a disadvantage. What is going on when the numbers are clearly superior? Before they could react, the black group had already entered the scene. Swish swish swish, tisk. On the arc's motto suspended in the distant sky, dozens of figures jumped down from above. Two of the figures became the most eye-catching. One is Bajis who transformed into a hundred-meter bloody dragon. 
One is Enel trailing Blue Lightning. Behind the two of them, Locke stepped on the tornado and Gangfeng followed closely behind. This should have been the moment for the three of them to shine. But at this moment, two other figures arrived first, directly surpassing Enel, Badgers and Crow. Then two extremely arrogant voices echoed in the sky. Teach, since I promised you, then Sengoku is you. Do you still remember Lousy? Ha 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 ha. Garp, it's been a long time. Have you become so weak? Aha, when these two voices sounded, their figures had stopped in front of Sengoku and Garp respectively. What, you are? After seeing these two people, Sengoku and Garp exclaimed almost simultaneously, with disbelief on their faces. Heir of the Ghost, Douglas Bullet. The alone read, Baloric Redfield. As Sengoku spit out these two names with great difficulty, the high-end combat power of the entire naval headquarters changed color. The faces of veteran powerhouses from all over the world watching the live broadcast were also filled with disbelief. How could these two monsters appear here? What is going on? Shouldn't they be imprisoned in Impel Down? The Blackbeard pirates must have broken into the deep sea prison, otherwise how could these two monsters appear here? Impossible, absolutely impossible. Then who is that fat blue guy? Jinbei, the sea hero. He was sent in by us before. Although those watching the battle did not have as detailed information as Marine, many of them had been paying attention to the news. The news of the world reported before that Kai Sha Jinbei was arrested and imprisoned in the deep sea prison because he was dissatisfied with the Shichibukai sign. At this time, not only did Hai Sha Jinbei appear on the battlefield, but the two monsters who were imprisoned in the deep sea prison more than ten years ago also appeared here. From this, it is not difficult to infer that there must be something wrong with the deep sea prison. Or, the Blackbeard pirates broke into the deep sea prison. Otherwise, there is no way to explain why this monster appears here. Aloof Red, Bullet, plus Enel of the strongest Logia Thunderfruit, Badgers of the 100-meter Blood Dragon, and even the guy who flies on a tornado. After all the Marine soldiers saw the Blackbeard Pirate's complete display of strength, everyone felt frightened. Moreover, many Marines also saw many people on the Blackbeard Pirate's large ship suspended above the sky, looking towards the battlefield. Obviously, the other party did not mobilize all its personnel at all. But even so, is it already so scary? Where on earth did Blackbeard gather such a group of monsters? However, what they don't know is that on the bow of the Blackbeard pirates, the sniper Van Oka, who possesses the Momo fruit, has already chosen a target. A blockbuster today. The sniper rifle in Van Oka's hand is aimed at the giant vice admiral who is besieging Little Oz. Momo 50 times gun. Boom, call out. As Van Oka pulled the trigger, the bullet ejected from his sniper rifle suddenly turned into a huge cannonball with a diameter of 5 to 6 meters, turning into a black stream of light that arrived first, blasting Enel, Bullet and Locke before they attacked. On the body of the giant vice admiral. Boom, the huge explosion directly blew the giant vice admiral who wanted to attack Little Oz's thigh dozens of meters away, leaving him lying on the ground unable to get up for 10 minutes. This movement immediately shocked the veteran vice admirals around. What was that just now? It looks like a cannonball. Stop joking. How can a cannonball be so powerful? That's right. Moreover, my experience tells me that it was shot from the big ship in the sky one kilometer away. What? No way. Boom. Just as the veteran vice admiral Ghost Spider was about to refute, a huge cannonball exactly like the one before hit his eyes. Broken Iron Slash. The ghost spider was not a vegetarian. He immediately pulled out eight long knives from the eight spider legs behind his back and slashed at the incoming cannonballs. Clang. However, in the next scene, a scene appeared that shocked ghost spider and the other seven veteran vice admirals. Ghost spider's small long knife slashed on the huge iron ball of the cannonball but did not cut it. Broken. You must know that ghost spider is a master swordsman at the level of cutting iron. How could he not be able to kill just a cannonball? It's armament hockey. Vice Admiral, the flying squirrel in the distance, had already reacted and was about to warn him, but it was too late. Boom. The shell exploded directly after being intercepted by the slash. Whoosh. Boom. Ghost Spider's body was also blown backwards for more than 10 meters, but he managed to survive with the strong body brought by his zone and armament hockey. However, the impact of the bomb explosion still caused him considerable injuries, and blood was already flowing from the corners of his mouth. 
Cough, cough, cough. Ghost Spider coughed up a mouthful of blood and said angrily. Who is firing the heavy artillery wrapped with armed colors? This guy must be dealt with first. Suddenly two vice admirals were seriously injured, which completely made the marine side notice the cold guns fired in the distance. No, it was Van Oka who fired the heavy cannons. Way ha 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 ha. At this moment, Badgers, who was charging in the form of a blood dragon from afar, had already transformed into a dragon man form. He fell from the sky with a wild laugh and kicked the ghost spider away. Then he looked at Yushu Tian General Go in the distance. He raised his fingers to the sky and smiled. Want to take action against the sniper on our ship? Stop joking. If I can't beat Admiral, can I still not beat you? It's just Vice Admiral, Lousy wants to fight one. Arrogant, the flying squirrel in the distance, Vice Admiral, was stimulated by Badger's arrogant demeanor. He roared and slashed at him with a single knife. Breaking wind and breathless slash. Before Badger's took action, not far behind, there were several fierce wind slashes more than 10 meters long that met the flying squirrel Vice Admiral's slashes. Boom boom boom. After a flurry of slashes and blows, the remaining several gangfang slashes directly chopped Yin Chen into pieces, rushed in front of the flying squirrel, and slashed down. Chang Chang Chang. Poof. Although the flying squirrel Vice Admiral blocked several gangfang slashes, he was still hit by one of them, causing his left arm to splatter with blood. Whoosh. The next moment, Crow, wearing a cat's claw espada, appeared next to Bullet. While pushing up his glasses with his right hand, he snorted coldly. Badgers, leave the guy with the sword to me. Why ha 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 ha. Badgers laughed when he heard this and didn't take it seriously. Suddenly he turned his head and looked in the direction of Shichibukai in the distance, grinned and said. That's okay too. Just in time, I want to try out the intensity of several other Shichibukai. It's not a good habit to sneak up on others, so it's up to you, Doflamingo. Bang. After saying that, Badgers, who was in dragon-like state, directly stepped on the ground to create a pit with a diameter of several meters, and rushed to Doflamingo in the blink of an eye. Doflamingo, who was watching the show and was about to sneak up on Little Oz to get the cup, didn't expect that he would be picked first. You know, even the pirates under Whitebeard choose to avoid their Shichibukai. Who is so bold? He turned his head and looked, and saw a bloody figure rushing forward and punching him. Feeling the terrifying power of the fist, Doflamingo was shocked, but his attack speed was not slow at all and he shouted. Spider's web wall. Hiss hiss. Immediately afterwards, countless thin white threads shot out in all directions, instantly forming a spider web in the air. Boom. And the next second, Badger's fist hit the spider web hard. Feeling the cobweb tremble and then begin to sag inward, Doflamingo's expression changed. He raised his hand and pushed up his red glasses and said with a smile. Furfurfurl, who are you? How dare you come to me directly? Who gave you the courage? What? Tisk. Boom. Before Doflamingo finished speaking, the spider's web wall in front of him was already broken, and then Badgers punched it away with a ferocious smile. Hot out. Just as Doflamingo was flying upside down, Badger spurted a red-hot breath directly from his mouth. What? What is this ability? Doflamingo, who was flying upside down, felt bad after seeing the ability user used by Badgers, but without giving him much time to react, he was engulfed by the heat. Boom! A huge explosion sounded. Super Strike Glue Whip. Doflamingo in the distance is obviously not so easy to deal with. A five-color strings with terrifying power swept away the explosive fireworks, and turned into a hundred-meter-long five-color strings that hit Badger's body and directly blew him away. Bang! But after Badger's figure flew upside down for dozens of meters, he reversed his body in the air, stepped on the air with both feet, stepped on an air blast, and once again turned into a red stream of light and rushed towards Doflamingo. Finger Pistol Heavy Rain Pear Blossom. What a thick-skinned monster. You are so proud of yourself for forcing me to this point. Foo 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 foo. Doflamingo saw that his strongest move in this state had no effect, and his expression turned completely cold. Su su su. As he finished speaking, the ground under Doflamingo's feet had turned into countless thin white lines. As his pointed leather shoes lightly touched the ground, two intersecting white lines several meters long suddenly shot up from a few meters away. Shield white line. Bang bang bang. Badger's finger pistol attacked this thin white line this time. 
It only destroyed the first white line of the shield, but it did not break the defense of the second white line. Seeing this scene, Badger's expression changed, and he saw that the ground around him had turned into countless white lines. The top stage of devil fruit that their captain had taught them about was suddenly resounding in their minds. That's, fruit awakening, Badgers exclaimed. Furfurfurl, Da Flamingo opened his arms and laughed. You have good knowledge, but unfortunately, you have chosen the wrong partner. Die, you wasteland. Way ha 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 ha, you want me to die. It's not that easy. Badgers was not surprised but delighted, not caring at all that he was trapped by countless white threads. 5. The next second, in his human dragon state, he transformed directly into a giant bloody dragon more than a hundred meters long, broke through the white line and soared into the sky, his dragon chant shaking the sky. Seeing this bloody dragon, Da Flamingo sneered with a gloomy expression. Foo 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 foo, I hate dragons the most. If I can't kill Kaido, why can't I kill you? A thousand arrows pierce the heart feather strikes the line. Badgers in the sky opened his mouth, and sprayed out the moves in his mouth at the countless threads entangled with armament hockey shooting from below. Bad wind. At the same time, the other side. Enel once again found Kazaru who wanted to besiege Blackbeard with Aokiji, and dragged him where he was. Bullet directly activated the fusion fruit and integrated countless warships into his body, turning him into a giant dozens of meters tall, facing Sengoku's golden Buddha. Redfield did not take action immediately, but looked to the other side with garb. After Blackbeard swooped down, he punched the previously frozen ground without hesitation. Freeze punch, boom, half of a Kainu's body, which had disappeared, was blown out of the ground with blue ice slag. He originally wanted to use the underground magma to recover from his injuries, but he never expected that the ground would be frozen before the magma was used. Before he could continue to create magma, he was blasted out of the ground by another extremely cold punch. If he hadn't known that Aokiji wouldn't attack him, he would have thought it was Aokiji's fault. Violent Pheasant Mouth Naturally, Aokiji would not watch Akainu suffer, so he directly created a big bird and bombarded Blackbeard. Swallow the heaven and the earth. Blackbeard waved his hand, and endless darkness surged up, instantly swallowing the frozen bird that was tens of meters long. Then he pointed the palm of his other ten insect hands at Akainu and sneered. Liberation. The next second, the pheasant mouth that had been charging towards Blackbeard rushed out of the black mist on the other side and directly hit the stunned Akainu. Boom. Akainu's entire body was smashed into the ground by the huge ice bird, and his body turned into an ice sculpture. Shave. Seeing this, Blackbeard flashed and appeared directly in front of Akainu who had turned into an ice sculpture. He grabbed hold of his left hand with a white flame and instantly melted the ice and pressed it on Akainu's chest. The palm of his hand turned into black mist in the next moment, and Akainu's ability was directly neutralized with darkness. Just give Ace some interest back first. Under the stunned look of the latter, Blackbeard smiled ferociously, pulled out the seven-star sword with his right hand, and injected Conqueror's hockey without hesitation. The roar of the roar echoed and the seven stars fell at the same time. One sword Shira, Tisk, ah, a black-red sword light slashed downwards from Akainu's left shoulder. Amidst Akainu's screams and wails, his left arm rose into the sky with the sword light. I hope everyone will support it and subscribe more.